Start your 15-day free trial today at walmart.com slash plus. Walmart shipped items only. Excludes oversized freight and marketplace items. Restrictions do apply. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Coons. It's the back left tire of your RV calling. Wanted to give you a heads up that I'm going to blow out on the highway later today. Wait, what? Uh, says here I'm going to burst in the middle of rush hour. Well, can we reschedule? Sorry, our policy states that once we're scheduled to burst, we have to. We really pride ourselves on our commitment to blowouts. RV owners can't schedule when things go wrong on the road. That's why there's Progressive, a leader in RV insurance. Do you want a text confirmation when I burst? Uh, think I'll notice. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. At Parker's Barbecue, our family has been serving your family for three generations. For that, we say thank you. Blessing families every Thursday. Kids eat free all day. That's the Parker's way. Legendary food served from our three locations. Always quick, always delicious. That's the Parker's way. At Parker's, our mission is to impact our customers through Christ-like service in a way that feeds them both physically and spiritually. That is the Parker's way. Christmas presents are great, but Christmas cash is awesome. This is Vince from Play It Again Sports in Greenville, and it's time for us to help you turn around the stuff in your house into cash. Clean out your closets and garages for cash today. We're buying sports equipment for baseball, softball, golf, tennis, lacrosse, hockey, and more. We're buying bicycles, skateboards, snowboards, water skis, treadmills, ellipticals, dumbbells, and more. Play It Again Sports, your home for Christmas cash. Just past the Cracker Barrel on Greenville Boulevard. Find us on Instagram and Facebook. Do you think you or your employees might have been exposed to COVID-19? Arc Point Labs of Greenville offers same-day COVID-19 results. No referral needed. Same-day results available. Arc Point Labs of Greenville offers easy employer solutions to COVID-19 testing. Arc Point Labs of Greenville is located across from Vited Hospital on Executive Circle behind Southern Bank. Call for an appointment or walk in. Arc Point Labs of Greenville, 215-5688 or arcpointlabs.com. Weekdays are a great time to visit North Carolina State Parks. The best time to learn about nature is to be able to look, listen, and feel its natural beauty. A visit to the North Carolina State Parks is perfect for homeschoolers, scout groups, and teachers looking for a fun field trip during the week. You'll be amazed at all the natural wildlife you'll see when you experience the beauty of each North Carolina State Park. Visit ncparks.gov to get all the information on the closest park near you. At Tiebreakers, we admit we have a bit of a problem. People love our wings so much that they're starting to sell their home TVs just so they can watch all the sporting events here at Tiebreakers. Seriously, we're glad you love our hand-bred and hand-cut boneless wings that much, but we really need you to go home at the end of the night. It's okay. We'll be here tomorrow. And when you come back, bring a friend with you. For great food, great friends, and cold beer, we'll see you at Tiebreakers. Tiebreakers, break the chain, eat local. University PC Care is proud to support Greenville Fire Rescue this year in their annual Operation Santa Claus Toy Drive. Stop by their fire tower location over the next two weeks to drop off new unwrapped toys. University PC Care will honor $20 off any service for customers dropping off toys, and they will donate an additional unwrapped toy for every toy donated. If you have any questions or for iPhone or computer support, call 558-1280 or go online at University PC Care Hey, this is Jay from Villa Verde. Did you know the Villa Verde opened up its second location? Yes, it's Villa Verde Dos on Arlington Boulevard across the hospital. This new location is a fast, casual environment where you can make your own bowls for only $9.95. Choose from our fresh ingredients, from our toppings bars, or enjoy an amazing rotisserie chicken. We promise you can be in and out in less than 15 minutes. For a quick, healthy meal at an affordable price, visit us at Villa Verde Dos on Arlington Boulevard. Villa Verde, a platform for good. Emporium presents a very beer Christmas. Tis the season to be drinking. Fa la 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 la. Jingle beers, jingle beers, jingle all the way. Rocking around the Christmas beer. Have a happy holiday. Give the gift of beer this holiday season. Emporium is offering a special 12 beers of Christmas box. Perfect for any craft beer lover on your list. And the Emporium gift card is always a winner. Christmas cheer awaits you today at Emporium on Dickinson Avenue and on Facebook and Instagram. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 and 104.1 FM Washington. 
The following is an exclusive presentation of Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Welcome to Pirate Radio Live. You can paint this with purple. Now live from the Pirate Radio studios in the heart of the Pirate Nation, here is your host, Clip Brock. Hello, everyone. Welcome in to Pirate Radio Live on a Monday. Clip Brock here inside the Pirate Radio studios and coming to you on Pirate Radio 92.7 FM in Greenville, 104.1 in Washington. We're on 125930 online, PR927FM.com, and you can watch us on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Subscribe to Pirate Radio TV on YouTube. You can watch this program, The Brian Bailey Show, also all of the post-game videos, the Zooms, and uh, all the videos that we post online at Pirate Radio TV. Make sure you are a subscriber. Coming up on today's show, we will recap the sports weekend and talk about the sports week that lies ahead. Coming up at 3.30, we'll talk to ECU assistant basketball coach Steve Rockefort. Coach Rock and the Pirates getting set to take on SMU coming up Wednesday night, 8 o'clock on ESPN+. Plus. We will talk about the 5-0 start for the Pirates and look ahead to the Mustangs as well. Also talk about Coach Rock and I's love for fitted hats. We have that in common. <laughs> we'll talk about Rock's hat collection as well later on this hour. At 4 o'clock, Ronnie Woodward from the Daily Reflector will join us. We'll talk all things ECU with Ronnie. At 4.40, the big man on campus, Jeff Nadeau, joins us. We'll talk ECU-SMU. What does he think the spread will be on that game on Wednesday night? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about what's going on tonight. Got Monday night football as well as some college hoops, so we'll dive into that with the BMOC. Troy D is here in hour three, and in that hour, We will open up the Pirate Radio treasure chest, so we will make you a winner coming up at 5 o'clock today in Hour 3 of today's show. So we've got a lot of prizes to get to this week and the first two days of next week, so stay tuned. Hour 3 today will open up the Pirate Radio treasure chest. Ellerby joins us to kick off a Monday. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Clip. So many questions going through my head right now. Got to start with the hat collection, I think. All right. What's the question? Uh, I see you got your, you know, Redskins Throwback hat. Redskins. Yeah. Yes. Do, do you have a new football team hat? I do not. Are you asking for one for Christmas? I don't know. Um, their merch is very boring right now. I don't know if there's a a Washington hat that I want at but the moment. You, I mean, don't you want to have one like as a keepsake when they go from the football team to something else? From what I understand, they're going to continue this on into next year. Huh. So I'll have plenty of opportunities to get some Washington football team apparel in uh, 2021, apparently. How many hats do you think you have? That's a great question. Um, that I wear? No, no. I want to know how many like you have, and that's my next question, my follow up <laughs> of like, I mean, do you have like? Because I know that there's some people that have tons of shoes, and usually just wear like one or two pairs. I probably have in the 30s to 40 hats. Okay, and I wear up to 20, maybe. Oh wow, you I do. You hadn't rotated many lately. Nah, my team is winning. They haven't lost in 29 days, I believe, Ellerby. Mm-hmm. So, and I don't get a lot of opportunities to speak highly of my team. So, while they are winning, I will continue to wear this lid. All right. What about you have an ECU basketball hat? They're winning. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, specifically basketball? I do not. Yes. Um, I, I do like, I, I guess I could get one at uh, UBE. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the, the white hats, and it says ECU, and then it has something under it. Right. You know which ones I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. I could get an ECU basketball right. specific hat. Maybe I should do that. Just something to consider if the Pirates, especially if the Pirates upset SMU on uh, Wednesday. I have an ECU basketball t shirt that I wear a lot. Mm. And uh, I remember one time years ago, I was telling Bryce Williams this the other day because uh, he said he saw a former ECU basketball player out in public recently and talked to him and uh i said one time i went to food line with an ecu basketball t-shirt it really tells you how bad ecu basketball is but the girl didn't know anything about sports either but she said oh are you on the team <laughs> and i was like all right where, where did you go with it i'm a sub six no i i could have gone with it i'm a under six foot fat white guy and for her to even think I could be a part of that team really made me feel bad about ECU basketball. This was years and years ago. 
but uh, I, no, I've never participated in D1 basketball. Other <laughs> is that another question you had for me? No, no. But do you have been to East Carolina basketball camp maybe as a kid? I went to Blue Steel basketball camp back in the day. Okay. Blue Edwards Mike Steel uh, basketball camp. So yes, I uh, have been a part of East U basketball camp. Mike Steel was my coach in middle school. He, uh, but at the time I went to Blue Steel camp, I don't remember him saying, "Hey, you, you really got a future in this. Maybe we'll we'll be contacting you in a few years." You know what? I was amazed last week when I was listening to the program when the news broke. Clayton McCullough is going to be the new uh, first base coach for the Dodgers. That you were teammates with him. That's right on the Winterville Colts. And like your sports connection as a youth to people in Greenville and other yeah. other players and athletes that have gone on to great coaching and careers is, is phenomenal. You're like the Kevin Bacon. Of uh, local sports, Will Brinson, uh, you know that name, right? Willie B. Did he uh, he play for ECU? Yeah. Okay, he pitched a no hitter against Winterfall All Stars, and I got one at bat against him. And I was just I, I made contact, hit it up the middle, shortstop made the play. I was uh. not very fast, LB. Uh So I almost broke up his no hitter against us in uh, All Stars. Holy, you- yeah. There's something about that chair where you just get to talk about... But none of my stories end with me having success. It's just I competed uh, against them or were teammates yeah, with them. I, mean, I, think I didn't do anything good. We need to get a list. Who's the guy that played for like the Indians for a while that you... Didn't you did you play with him? That uh, wait, you talking about Berg Baden? Huh? Yes, <laughs> he played for the Red Sox and uh, other teams. He was an AG Cox basketball teammate of mine. Okay, see, I'm so just, I'm I'm around success. You, you, I surround myself with talent. Yes, obviously. I mean, it's it's, it's really phenomenal. So, <laughs> by the way, programming alert, Ellery Clayton McCullough will join us on the show Friday. Nice. So uh, the new first base coach for the world champion L.A. Dodgers. Uh, will join us coming up uh, Friday at four o'clock. Don't like the Dodgers one lick my whole life, but nope. now like I feel like obligated to to pull for them. It's kind of like mm. kind of like when Dwayne Harris was on the Cowboys. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I know you, you as a Braves fan, it's it's tough. No, it's to, it's, it's tough to pull for them. Is not the words I would use. I wish Clayton all the success. In right, the world. It, I guess it, I guess uh, it it will be. And you know what? He doesn't need my wishes or you pulling for them. They're going to be just fine. You think They're so? going to score. He's going to be doing a lot of this, uh, of high fives after guys hit home runs. That is rounding true. first base. That so. is true. But it, it, I guess it takes off some of the 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 what's the with the the, what's the stain. The word? Yeah, for, Hate. for for the Dodgers, I guess. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Look. Yeah. Wishing him luck and. Uh, what a path he's been on, of course, his dad, uh, Howard McCullough, a lifetimer mm-hmm. in baseball as well. So, And speaking of connections around these parts, LRB, if you are in eastern North Carolina, you are connected somehow to somebody in the baseball world, right? I mean, like, there's so many guys that have either come up here, been at ECU, you know, Tommy Easton, ECU Pitt Community College. You've been around the Little League program, RV, even Jason Mills out of Conley, like, You've been around some baseball greatness if you're in this area. Yeah, absolutely. You've known somebody uh, probably directly that, exactly. that has gone on to very s- successful baseball. Even Joe West, the umpire, a lot of you know, <laughs> a lot of people can connect to him as well. Yeah, <laughs> my grandfather. Oh, here we go. Not, no, I don't have a connection to him. Uh, my grandfather just uh, said that he hated the Braves, and every time he called a game against them, he rooted against the Braves. My, Joe West, Joe West uh, okay, and uh, specifically wanted them to lose every game. So uh, that's my Joe West. That's all I remember about Joe West growing up. I thought I thought you were going to have a story that uh, no, nah, I don't it, have a your grandfather played you know baseball or something with him. <laughs> had, had some sort of Joe West threw me out of a little league game yeah. back in the day. Who knows? All right, uh, LRB news of the day here locally. Jake Verity is taking his talents to the National Football League uh, to the draft and. He will not be kicking for ECU in 2021. Came out with the announcement today. There was a Zoom. We'll have uh, some audio later on in the show. Uh, If we can get that, we'll uh, we'll hear from Jake Verity. But LRB, he, uh, for her, unfortunately, uh, was the player of the game, the Morgan Printer's performance of the game quite a bit (laughs) on our post-game shows over the years. Uh, ECU was able to put together some offense and defense towards the end of the year and we didn't rely on jake as much but he's been a big uh, part of ecu scoring over these last three to four years yeah you don't become the all-time leading scorer just you know by nothing i mean i, I think uh i wish jake the best and uh obviously watching a lot of the nfl highlights yesterday some teams are in some Good need of grief 
some some consistency. There's a lot of missed extra points now. Now the degree of difficulty is a little bit harder in the NFL, but uh, certainly hope. Uh, obviously, it'll be probably a situation that he'll get signed as a free agent with somebody. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, not surprised Jake Verity's leaving. I guess kind of like the Blake Prohl thing. I guess he, he just kind of feels like his opportunity. Is his like, is much more understandable, I think, than Prohl. I think Prohl could have stayed, got better. How much better is Verity going to get with another year of college? I don't know, but uh, he, he's got a shot. And the way all he's got to do, he's got to get he's got to get one job, LRB, because these kickers get one job and then they are floated recycled around the league for like seven years yeah you know? i think kickers could be recycled more than nba coaches <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you see graham gano he's played for my team he's played for chandler's team he's playing for a different team now and then you could do this with ba- a million ba- guys bailey with uh, minnesota was yeah, he was well, on the cowboys i don't know does he still have a job as of today, I don't know, but yeah, I mean, but he missed. He was zero for four yesterday, but it's like, uh, it's, it's yeah, kickers move around a lot. Chandler, you got you taught me out of uh, putting Joey Slide my my fantasy lineup for the playoffs. Thanks for that. Yeah, and uh, Brandon McManus for the Broncos yesterday missed two extra points, and he tweeted uh, Brandon McManus sucked, sucked today. today. Yeah, <laughs> the kicker himself tweeted that about himself. Go ahead and get out in front of it. You know he's going to be hearing it from everybody. He just went ahead and, and said it himself. I wonder if that'll become a thing before like coaches go to post game press conferences. They'll just tweet out, "We sucked." Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no need to ask questions. We were awful. Today. Yeah, I don't know what kicker you did pick up for this weekend, but did, did they help you out at all? No, I picked up Graham Gano and he had one point. Oh, wow. but I'm going to win. Any, I'm going. I'm good. I, I'm going to win anyway. All right, there's our fantasy talk for the day. Yes. How's your fantasy football team? Uh, my fantasy team's still perfect. <laughs> Have you ever participated? No. That is unbelievable. Never. Why is it unbelievable? Because it, it, well, nowadays, I mean, it's like, it's just so in your face and out there. I would assume that, and you know what? I would assume at some point you and Hunter would like do a dad son type of thing. He has hit me up to do it next year. Okay, so, awesome. So I'm currently on the yes. clock for that. I kind of, and I guess I'll enjoy, I need to get. I guess it's not that hard because millions of people do it, but uh, I just I enjoy just watching the NFL and having no stake in it at all. It's just I fun. Know. It's just fun for me. It's probably a better way to go through your NFL life too. It than is to not care. No, and I don't really have a team, as I've stated multiple times. I have teams that I prefer because I have relationships with people that really love those teams. Um, but I just, it's just really kind of fun just to watch NFL highlights and not worry about how many catches julio had or how many you know missed kicks such and such had. i mean it would just be i don't know it'll be interesting but uh, i could be on the clock for 2021 nfl fantasy season i'll keep you updated i just would like long for the m- monday when you come in and you're like man i need a one more catch from juju smith schuster <laughs> and we would have won like be really emotional about it that, that's what i want to happen next year okay that's what when you and and uh and then we'll start doing hunter makes fun of us i guess when you hear the monday shows and we miss all those games yes. picking on friday he loves the tony don chandler clip brock uh nfl <laughs> pick segment so next year it's going to be when we're talking fantasy lineups and stuff he's going to make fun of all our fantasy suggestions pretty much and be mad at us because we told him and the then the thing. following year he's probably going to be doing your show <laughs> <laughs> that's true if we miss enough we're out of here it'll be lrb at three o'clock but younger <laughs> LRB. Hunter LRB will be here. Just I'll let him. I'll put him in the hot seat and let him talk to you in person. All right. Uh, it was a. Uh, it's a victory Monday for myself. Troy D will be in here. Yeah. And I think Troy's angry. The Bears won. Yeah. At this point, you you gotta. Uh, you probably need to tank it. How do you feel when the Panthers lose right now, uh, Chandler? You good with it? Because they There's moved no up motion. like three stops uh, spots in the draft, right? Right. Yesterday, yeah, and especially. I mean. The team we faced yesterday had the same exact record we had. Four yeah, eight. go ahead and lose. Jets. Yeah, yeah, I was watching the end of the Panthers game, uh, having a few beers at Emporium with a few guys yesterday, and uh, it, it was just like the Panthers were like coming back, and then the Broncos. I liked how the Broncos dropped the deep bomb on them. True lock yeah. can sling uh, a bomb, especially when he has time. Yeah, to they were like, "Screw yeah. this, we're not running out the clock." Let's just and it dropped a bomb on him. And number twenty four was just in nowhere. Uh, the Broncos could have done what the Panthers did a couple weeks ago with Minnesota. You thought the game was over when the Minnesota punt returner fumbled the football mm. inside their own ten yard line. You think, all right, the game's over, and then the Broncos hit us with a deep ball yesterday to what you would thought. Uh, put the game away. I think it put them up 12 with like four or five minutes left in the game. 
the Panthers had a chance to win at the end of the game, down five. And uh, Teddy Bridgewater, I know that we'll probably talk about it on Friday with Tony, but once again cannot get it done for the boys in black and blue. I like there are Ch- not many Teddy Bridgewater fans out there wearing no more. Uh, blue yeah. right now. I liked uh, Chandler's uh, picks on Friday. He's always referred himself as uh, Chandler Island, like is he the new Revis? Yes. Yeah. Like also, it. he's the heat miser. Yeah, yeah I, I heard, heard that too. Elderby, please tell me. You know who the heat miser is. No, I did not. I listened to the whole segment. <laughs> and he did a terrible job explaining oh, who it was. Absolutely. But we finally got it. It's from the, the Claymation yeah. Christmas cartoon. Oh, I wow. get it now. I saw, yeah. I heard it. I saw the tweet, saw everything. But I, I would never just like, like if you'd have called me on uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire as your lifeline. <laughs> Phone a friend. <laughs> Ellerby, <laughs> what is the character's name in what's that? What it's, was the movie called? Uh, it was uh, the Santa. year without a Santa Claus. Yeah, and then I think there was one with Rudolph. But uh, yeah, you, a, you ask him, hey, what is? Uh, do you know what the Heat Miser is or what movie it's from? Then you hear B <laughs> where he hung up the phone. <laughs> Click the Heat Miser. <laughs> the Heat Miser. Mm. All right, so uh, Jake Verity news today. Joe Dooley had a Zoom. Got some of those uh, comments as well to get to Ellerby as they get ready. For SMU uh, coming up on Wednesday. No, we this was the first weekend without pirate football or hoops yeah. in a while. It was it was it was rare. It was kind of weird in a way. But I got a lot of accomplished shopping for my family and friends on Saturday. So without having to worry about what the score was of any game. But uh, what do you think the spread's going to be on Wednesday? I said twelve. I go said eight or nine. Uh, we'll ask Jeff Nadeau coming up later on in the show. I probably won't ask Steve Rockefort coming up next. You don't think so? Should I start asking the coaches what the spread's going to be? I don't know if that's a good question. I, I think a bit better is say, look, I'm not going to ask you what the spread is, but do you think you're going to cover or win? Would that be a better question? Yeah. What's your <laughs> best guess at a final score? And then when the spread comes out, I'll know which side to go on. Yeah. Well, uh, there but, you go. But I, Brock's going to be uh, – look, they, I don't know. This one it is up there with, I guess, Houston, Cincinnati, Memphis. I mean, this is one of the toughest games they're going to play this season. It's, on the road in it's, Dallas. It's a definitely welcome to conference play game. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to watch the Pirates at 8 o'clock on Wednesday night to see how they hang because I don't think – I think if SMU goes on a 30-6 to six run, that uh, it's not going to be an overtime win <laughs> <laughs> by the Pirates. Probably right about that. So they, they better uh, they better play uh, a full, full 40 minutes. Yeah. Uh, Got to get off to a good start. Can't get behind. And SMU is scoring a boatload of points in every game this year. And they won a nail-biter on the road at Dayton. That's a really good win. Yes. They have played some weaker opponents, and they've crushed them all. They, they their, their close game was against a good team. Against teams they're better than, they, they've just taken care of them easily. Let's so. look into the crystal ball here and forecast an ECU basketball win on, on Wednesday, Clip Brock. What are the headlines on Thursday about the state of East Carolina basketball's program? There's always there's a good buzz and excitement now, but what does a win over the Mustangs do? I mean, it, it legitimizes everything. I would say, like that we've seen so far during the five and zero start, and that this team is for real. I, people are excited right now. My question is, if they lose to SMU, if they lose to SMU by twenty, what is the here we go again? What is the feeling of ECU basketball? I think it's here we go again. Well. Maybe, I don't know. I still, I, I think they're better than they were a year ago. I think they're going to be good this year. I, I don't know if now. Re- correct me if I'm wrong. When, when we did, uh, who's going to win more conference games? Oh the, yeah, the, the men or women? Did Did you go? Shirley went women, I think. And then did you go? Women? I think we reversed it. I think Shirley said men, and I said women. Yes. Yeah. Do you still stand by that? Sure. <laughs> 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 um, no, nah, I, I I feel better probably now than I did about the men's team now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it's going to be close either way. I, I think they can both finish around the middle, honestly. All right. And uh, look, I don't know a lot about these women's basketball teams are going to be You playing. don't know much about the opponents. No, no, not at all. Uh, I know that South Florida's usually pretty good in women's hoops. That's about it. Uh, as far as the men, uh, there is like Houston and then SMU and then another tier of a couple teams. And then it's like a free-for-all, I think, in the, in the on men. the men's side of things. Yeah. Well, maybe East Carolina can, 
can throw some haymakers. I think get climbed to the top. Yeah, fifth, sixth, uh, not out of the question. That'd be awesome this year. I, I don't think. All right, uh, Ellerby Championship Saturday. Are you ready? Yes, uh, I was a little more excited about the SEC game until I saw Florida throwing shoes and losing to Go Tigers. That was strange. The whole thing was strange. LSU was 24-point underdogs heading into that game. Florida was cruising to the AAC or the SEC championship where if obviously they beat Alabama, they're in. Now what happens if Florida wins? Alabama's still in. And so so nothing's changed? And Florida will be the first team to win the SEC and not get in. No way. No way. SEC winner gets an automatic bid. With two losses? Yeah. To, to, I don't know. I don't think Florida gets in. I think the LSU game was was too bad. That would be incredible if that were to happen. Because their loss would be to LSU and, uh, what, A&M, Florida's losses. Um, but, yeah, you're, you're, what you're saying is if Florida does get in, who are you leaving out? Undefeated Ohio State, the ACC runner-up, who would be Notre Dame or Clemson. So, yeah, I, I look, I'm hoping if, for a Florida win just if, for chaos. If Clemson wins, that throws some more chaos. And if Florida wins, because then Notre Dame or Clemson is going to be – well, Clemson would be in if they beat Notre Dame. The ACC, the ACC winner is in. That, that, that's an automatic in. And it's just I don't think a two-loss Clemson's in. No, no. Clemson loses, I say they're out. Right. I agree with that. But, and, and I'm not sure – and I'm not, it could get hairy for Notre Dame – if uh, how the other game's going, whether they, they 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 keep their seat at number four, I love I love I hope the more chaos the better. Yeah, because they've built this system where it's just next to impossible unless you're one of these eight teams in college football that they want to predetermine from the start of the season. Yeah, the team we're not talking about is Cincinnati, who were bypassed by Iowa State last week. Yeah, that, and the commissioner's comments were spot on. I think, you know, he, he, him saying, why do we even play these games if you're going to have a team with two losses jump a team that was idle and their last two wins were over teams that weren't even that impressive. It was against Texas and, and West Virginia. So the, the whole thing's crazy. College, and I still, and I thought this COVID year would, would show some reform and then Auburn, you know, dumps $21 million for Gus Mazelon <laughs> to leave. And then... Uh, Mazelon, that's an old restaurant. Is it? Agreed. Sorry. But uh, the, you know, and there's some other other people that are that are throwing around names. But the one thing I like about the chaos of Gus leaving is uh, I've seen some interesting names for that job. That even on Jim Rome show today that they were talking about that uh, would Lane Kiffin leave Old Miss. I mean, you talk about that jumping from SEC, and that's been done before because uh, Tommy Tuberville left Ole Miss and went to Auburn um, at, at one point. And then the other name that you throw out there that I thought was very interesting that I read online somewhere: What if Mike Gundy left Oklahoma State and went to Auburn? Just so uh, I mean, talents to the SEC. Yeah, I mean, he flirted with Tennessee one time, but I, I thought I just the carousel could get very interesting if if some sitting head coaches' jobs start start moving around. Hugh Freeze. Uh, heads back to the SEC, yeah, from Liberty, mm-hmm. perhaps, yeah. Uh, college football 2020. How about this one? Washington uh, was in the Pac-12 championship. They were going to play at USC Friday night. Uh, they are not going to play football due to medical COVID reasons. So Oregon, you've lost two straight games. Step on up. You can play for a championship. Come on down. You're the next contestant. Oregon lost to Oregon State 41 to 38 on November 27th. They then lost to Cal on uh, December 5th and now they will represent their side in the Pac-12 championship against USC. So they're 3 and 2. Yeah. Heading into the championship. Yeah, I, I still I get I seen like Virginia, Pitt, and Boston College have all opted out of bowl games. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just expect that to be that that to, that to pick up too. Mm-hmm. I, I just feel like there, there's going to be all these players. I mean, and, and look, I think they should have the right to vote, but I think all these players are going to be like, I could be home for the holidays, or I could be isolated in my college town practicing, and then going to some bowl game where I have to sit in a hotel room. I mean, it seems to. I mean, that you're not playing for anything. Really? Never, no, no. And not to be hypocritical here because I'm Mr. I'll watch every y- game. Yes. I'll do pulls. But I've said for years, all of these bowl games are meaningless. They have no stakes at all. When are you, you – what's the like, win or go home? Well, if you win, you go home. If you lose, you go home. Both teams are going home. There's nothing like, yes. to gain. Uh, Hello. 
Hello, folks. What is this? Who are you? You're <laughs> that guy. You're the guy that was here last week. You're the guy on our social media. I came by to let everybody know there's only seven days left that they can win in the Pirate Radio Treasure Chest giveaway. We are. We're telling people yeah. that we don't need you. What? Have you gave away yet? Pardon? Have, have we gave away? <laughs> I was hoping to win. You were hoping to win? I'm a winner. <laughs> you are. Well, you have to call when we say call to I can't win. I just walk in. You cannot just walk in. That's a shame. That is a real shame. I'm going to walk back out. Chandler, show this man the door. i got to ask you about your hair at some point. It's that done is... by some nice lady downtown. <laughs> it's a beautiful. <laughs> a nice job. A beautiful head of hair. Are we going to start locking the doors again? <laughs> <laughs> you might need to get security. I just walked right in here. Chandler! Get yes. this man oh out of here. Gosh. All right, there's Big Buck McCluskey. Who the hell is this guy? Is this like we're turning into like WWE right here? <laughs> yeah. Or, I mean, like Big Buck McCluskey. So I saw, yeah, he was in the lobby the other day, apparently all over our studio, mm-hmm. but he was uh, cutting a promo in the lobby when Shirley and I walked up in on him uh, the other day. He's a winner. He somehow had his hands on all of our prizes, too, LRB. I don't know if you saw that. Now, did you play like you sports with him? <laughs> <laughs> Wait that, a minute! Is that the was Big Buck McCluskey on like your Winterville Colts team? Was we used to have Col- a teammate named Little Bucky. Oh, L- really? Little Bucky McCluskey. <laughs> so Little Bucky is now Big Buck. How about that? Man, I, that, yeah, he used to be our uh, pulling right guard. Well, maybe we need to invite Big Buck back. You guys have a little uh, little segment one day, folks. You cannot just walk in and claim a prize, as we just learned. You got to call. Uh, you got to call three one seven twelve fifty when we tell you to do so, and we will do so later on uh, in today's show. Talk to several people that are getting pretty frustrated. They can't get through. Man. Yeah, the. Uh, the natives are getting restless, especially when we get people on and they say, yeah, I've won. this is my third time winning. Yeah, and I hate to point out the obvious, but people ask, you know, like, well, how do I win in the treasure chest? I said, well, you have to listen to Pirate Radio Live from 3 to 6, and then you have to be the lucky caller of whatever Shirley throws out there. There and, is no secret at all. Like, yeah. It's just you, yeah, you yeah. call and yes. you get lucky. And, and, and you know, as long as you're 21 or older, and uh, we, we really don't care. We, just, we, we want to give the stuff away. The goal is to get rid of all the treasure chest prizes and that'll happen by a week from tuesday and we will make somebody a winner coming up in the five o'clock hour ellerby thanks for hanging out see you next week who the who the uh, football team playing this week the washington football team plays the seattle football team Ooh, that is going to be tough tough game but it, look we got a one game lead over the giants we just got to keep that one game lead for three more weeks all right good luck how about the eagles yesterday Jaylen how about Hurts. the nfc east the best division in football that there you go I, I will say I think they garner the most attention yeah, of, of any eyeballs. division, but uh, I don't know about the best. Hey, they're on Sunday Night Football again next week. Browns-Giants. How about that weird Sunday Night Football matchup? Hmm. All right, uh, Steve Rockefort going to join us on the other side. Talking hats. Of this time out, we will talk hats and hoops with Steve Rockefort. That's on the way on Pirate Radio Live. Back with you after this. Ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer here. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now here. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Busch, Bud Light Beer, and Bud Light Seltzer. IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. Temperatures are in the low 30s at 10 a.m., increasing sharply to 75 degrees by 1 p.m., and then dropping into the teens by 10 p.m. So before you go to work, put on some gloves, pack some shorts, and a parka that should cover you for the day. Your heating and cooling is taking a beating. Guarantee your family's comfort all fall and winter with a new train system. It's hard to stop a train. For a limited time, get a new train system with 0% financing for 60 months. Go to DelcorInc.com for more information. Delcor, the service professionals. See your independent train dealer for details. Call one 888 for details. Hidden phone trade-ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. You won't find any of those at U.S. Cellular because we do things differently. And that means you can get the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE or a Google Pixel 5 for free with no hidden requirements all season long. U.S. Cellular. Upgrade to fair. Terms and conditions apply. See store uscellular.com for details. 
Does the idea of going to your local U.S. cellular store make you feel a bit uncomfortable? Tired of the hassle of waiting and wearing a mask? Let Toby Williams and his outside sales team take away that worry. They will come right to your home or office and drop your phone off on the porch or at the front desk for you. Saving you time and worry is what the team at Cellular Warehouse is all about. Call Toby today at 252-799-7051 and let them help you with all of your wireless needs. Cellular Warehouse, your local U.S. cellular authorized agent. When you don't have time to go to lunch, let Jimmy John's deliver lunch to you. With Jimmy John's, we can get a freaky fresh sandwich to you freaky fast. Click to order at jimmyjohns.com. Dinner's great. It's one of your top three favorite meals. You just don't want to have to make it. Well, with Jimmy John's, you don't have to. Whether you live in a sandwich delivery zone or head into the store, you can always get a freaky fresh sandwich. Click to order at jimmyjohns.com. Hi, this is Jeff Charles, and welcome inside the booth. Pirate basketball games come fast and furious this month. Hopefully. Some thoughts next. If you missed Pirate Radio Live, you missed. Uh, what I've learned in the last 24 hours is that I will never, ever, ever bet on the East Carolina Pirates because their coach is the softest ever. coach I've ever seen in my entire life. Softest coach in America, he called you. I don't, you. I don't uh, know anybody ever, your ever said that about me. <laughs> I'd love to have Pat here in Greenville, North Carolina. I'd love to meet him. <laughs> Maybe Daddy could, Ficklin Stadium. Maybe we could arrange a visit yeah. of Pat McAfee and do the Oklahoma drill, you and him. How about that? Yeah. You think he'd say that to your face we can find out <laughs> pirate radio live weekdays from three to six right here on pirate radio the voice of the pirate nation in this the most abnormal of years ecu is scheduled to play eight games in december could be more could be less remember joe dooley's ball club has already lost three games when the pirates opted out of the golf coast showcase in fort myers in november to start the season we fully expect to see some starts and stops broadcasting games in an empty williams arena Minji's Coliseum has been a surreal experience. You can hear PA announcer Morgan Naylor's and even the players on the bench acting like fans cheering their teammates on. I long for the days of leaving Minji's with a headache after a packed house has raised the roof. But it's not going to happen this year. Maybe in January a few fans will be permitted. It's easy for me and my broadcast partner Cy Seymour and on-site engineer David Horn. We can pull right up to the front door and there are no lines in the men's room. Come on back again next time and we'll visit inside the booth. This is ECU assistant football coach Roy Tesh, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour One of Pirate Radio Live. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Greenville Utilities Neighbor to Neighbor program provides help for those who need temporary assistance with their utility costs. You can make a difference as well. Your tax-deductible donation can be added to your GUC bill each month, or you can make a one-time donation, and GUC matches all donations up to $20,000 each year. Consider helping a neighbor with GUC's Neighbor to Neighbor program. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Cliff Rock. All right, thank you, Charlie Rhodes. Chandler Honeycutt producing today's program. Uh, at around 2.30 this afternoon, it said my computer needed to restart and to be updated. So I said... Oh, you had to do a Windows update. So I said, all right, let's go with it. So... It, I think the first thing that popped up was that restarting computer, and that was on 13% forever, but that has gone through, been 100%. Now it says working on updates, and it said 17%. It said this will take a while. Your PC will restart several times. So let's put some, some bets on it. What time will this be done? Will it be done before 5 o'clock, and if so, or before 6 o'clock, I should say? If so, what time? Okay, so we got to nail down the time then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I Closest will, to the pen wins. 5.23 p.m. Okay. Wow. I was thinking 5, like, I'll say 5.13. Okay. So, Chandler. Chandler. That's crazy because I was thinking about 5.23, too. That was what, that was the time I was born. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go before 5 o'clock. I'm going to go right. 4.47. All right, the picks are in. 447, 523, 513. Yep. So working on updates. It's at 17% right okay, now. Okay, so now what are the odds that any of us are going to remember that? 
<laughs> when it happens. So I should write these down. <laughs> Shirley's got 523. I do have some news and notes, too, if you need to. Uh, if you need some uh, help with that. I'll tell you what. You want to you want to talk to Let's Coach talk to Rock, Rock first? And okay. then we'll get our notes to wrap up this hour. Ronnie okay. Woodward set to join us around 4 o'clock. But we do have the assistant basketball coach for the ECU Pirates on the Fixed NC Live line, Steve Rockefort, joining us. Coach, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. How about you? Hey, doing great. Uh, enjoying watching this basketball team uh, in action right now, 5-0, and and they begin conference play coming up Wednesday night against SMU. And, and first of all, Coach, I guess a, a little mini break here for the basketball team. You played a lot of games and uh, not a, a lot of days. What was it like to – not only have the weekend off, but uh, you still got a little time to waste uh, before you get ready for SMU on Wednesday. Um, I think it was good. I think it was good for the staff. I think it was good for the players. You know, I mean, there are things that we need to work on, um, you know, for ourselves, not not as much as game prep. Um, and then we still had, you know, Monday and Tuesday to prep for the game Wednesday. So um, I, th- I think it's been good. Um, our guys have done a really good job. You know, I think – Joe's done a really good job of, from June, how he's handled all these workouts and practices, and he's been very, very diligent and very thoughtful in the way that he's done it, and, you know, it's allowed us to get in five games. Well, a question mark heading into the season is three-point shooting coach, and uh, a bit of a slow start to the season there, and, and since then... Man, that has looked a lot better. The Pirates are shooting the ball well from the outside. How's that, in your opinion, gone so far? And moving forward, are you, are you confident you're coaching a team that will be able to hit the three uh, the remainder of the year? Well, I told you that when last time I came in uh, <laughs> and did did your show. Yeah. You know, that that our guys shoot the ball better than what the percentage is said. And whenever you are not making shots – that you're capable of making and or shooting the percentage that you want to shoot, then I think the, the main thing is, is is you have to shoot wide, wide open shots. And, you know, that's driving kick shots, that's inside-out shots, that's make the extra pass shots. But, you know, the more wide open shots we can get, the better percentage we're going to shoot better percentage we shoot, the more points we score, the more points we score, the more games we win. You say making the extra pass, that has not been an issue for the Pirates this year. Joe Dooley has talked about how unselfish the team is. In fact, he said at times too unselfish, but coach, you got to like that. I, I, and I've started to look at it because Joe Dooley brings it up every post game, the amount of assists to field goals for ECU. And I think in the last game, it was something like 21 assists, 25 field goals, something like that. So uh, guys are sharing the basketball out there. Yeah, and and I, and I think to to go back to the three point stuff as far as shooting really good shots, really wide open shots, I th- I think the thing is the people shooting the ball, they need to know that too. You know, if if I get a pass and and I feel like I've got a shot, and and somebody closes me out tight, then then I don't need to shoot that ball. I need to pass it and give it up. And I think our guys understand that. And I think through five games, they've gotten a lot better with that. And you are right. The last game we had 25 field goals. We had 21 assists. That's that's unheard of. And I do think our guys are extremely unselfish. I think they really like playing with one another. And uh, you know, I think having them uh, older and together has really helped. Yeah, and and we've talked about that, coach. But yeah, I don't think you can overstate it, especially in a year like this, uh, continuity. And uh, man, it's been an issue over the years uh, with ECU basketball, just with player retention and guys transferring and things like that. To have pretty much your entire roster back, and then you know some newcomers in there, notably Noah Farrakhan. The, the team knows each other, has played a lot with each other, and and that's paying dividends. You're going to have an advantage there over a lot of teams this year in that department, right? Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, I, I think when you look at our roster, you know, um, I, I think it's well built. And from the standpoint of we've got three very good point guards, three guys that can really play that position. We've got big inside guys, and we've got big guards and big wings. And I don't think people, you know, it, truly understand how big those guards and wings are. You know, when you're 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", 
on the perimeter, um, that's really, really big. We're tall, we're long, and I think those guys are starting to use that. Talking to Steve Rockefort today on Pirate Radio Live. Coach, let's talk about some of the individuals. Uh, I've been a, a Brandon Suggs fan since he stepped foot on campus, and I was talking about it last week. He, he he shoots, you know, shoots pretty well. He, he drives to the basket. He's a good finisher. He's a good defender. He, he's pretty much solid at everything. And man, if he could take the next step at a few of those things, he could be a, a great player. Had the big bucket, uh, aggressive drive to the basket. Nobody was stopping him uh, there late in the game on that bucket against North Florida. Really, uh, the, the game-winning basket, the go-ahead basket. And uh, how, how far has he come along in year two of his progression? Well, I mean, it, it was like last year. You know, if you would have said going into the first game, who's going to start a point guard, you'd have probably said Tremont. And if you said who's going to start at the two, you'd have probably said Tyree Jackson. And when we played our first home game uh, and the first game of the year, the starting point guard was Tristan Newton, who was a freshman, and the starting two guard was Brandon Suggs, who was a freshman. And because uh, the the other two guys were injured, um, the, those two freshmen had to play a lot of meaningful minutes. Um, they had to start games. Um, they had to play heavy minutes, and I think that really, really helped them develop. And, uh, you know, Brandon, like you said, he can do a little bit of everything. You know, he's 6'7", he's got long arms, he, he's tall, he's long, um, and, and he's been really, really good for us, and I think he's much improved. And hit the big shot against North Florida. You saw Tristan Newton, I believe it was the Charlotte game, right before halftime, isolation he hits a jumper right before the half of the horn he's not scared of the big moment obviously Jaden Gardner not scared you got a lot of guys and you've played some tight games coach but you got a lot of guys that seem to be not, you know unafraid of the big moment at the end of the game that's a good thing to have too yeah and, and I think the other thing about our team is, is these guys um we're like we said we're, we're tall we're long and we're deep and you know uh I can't I'm not I can't remember what game it was maybe the Wilmington game, you know, in the first half, you know, we had Jaden with two fouls. We had Luigi with two fouls. We had Tyree with two fouls. And we had somebody else with two fouls. We had four guys with two fouls. Um, you know, argu- arguably our best player, Jaden Gardner, and maybe three starters with two fouls, and we had a 14-point lead at halftime. And, you know, that's why I think, uh, being deep is going to really help us. You know, everybody's not going to play their A game every single night. Some people are going to be, you know, there's going to be injuries down the road, and we, we've got to have guys that are capable of stepping in and playing, and so far they have. Steve Rockerford joining us. It's been fun to watch the guys on the court. For me, Coach, it's been fun to watch the guys on the sidelines during games. And uh, we've talked about how much the, the team has been getting into it the defense chance and, and cheering on their teammates uh, on the sidelines. Morgan Aylers, who does PA for ECU and Menji's Coliseum, said that Pig Jackson was really leading the charge against North Florida there on the sidelines. I mean, that's it's got to add a boost to the guys on the court, but also as a coach, uh, you got to love to see that, right? Yeah, and I, I think these, you know, I think those guys have a relationship. You know, they like playing together. They care about one another. They want to see each other do well, and they want to win. So, you know, they've done a great job of that. They did it last year. You know, I mean, it's amazing, you know, because you can watch a lot of benches at a lot of places and guys are sitting on their hands. There's no emotion. There's bad body language. You know, for the most part, our guys have shown extremely good body language. They've cheered for one another. Even guys that are coming in for them when, when maybe they don't want to come out. You know, the it, it's, a, it's a strong team, and I think those guys know that they to be able to win. You've been through five games with it now, Coach. Will you ever get used to playing basketball, coaching basketball in an, in an empty arena with no fans? It's it's different, man. You know, it's different. You know, the I, I would say it's comparable to you know when we started playing the close scrimmages. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you know, there's referees and there's both teams and there's coaches and there's no fans. It's very very similar to that. The only difference is is you know it's a real game. Steve Rockefeller joining us, Coach. Uh, Jaden Gardner, the, the go-to guy night in, night out. I said the other day, I mean, he's on the cusp of a 30-point, 35-point game. He's missed a, a lot of chippies 
but I, and and maybe he does get frustrated with himself. We don't see it a lot on the court. He keeps playing. He's going to keep playing defense, rebounding, even if a shot isn't going in. But do you feel like he's close to having one of those monster uh, breakout nights? You know, I, I mean, he's going to play hard every single night. So, you know, the one thing about it is, is he he's a very consistent player. You know, he plays hard. He's very consistent. He's a good free throw shooter. Um, and, and what he does, he does every single night. So, like you said, um, can he play better? Yeah, he can play better. Um, do you, in your mind, pencil in 20 points and 10 rebounds? Probably. You know, he, he's consistent. Um, can he get what you said? Yeah, he's capable of doing that almost every night. So, uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully he does it Wednesday night. One thing with him from day one, you talk about body language. He he has the the positive body language throughout the game, and he had it as a freshman. He was I remember him directing traffic as a freshman, telling people where to go. Almost a a coach on the court. How much is he kind of rubbed off on the other guys on the team? Is he responsible for for some of this continuity that we see with the basketball team? Well, I, I think I think I think he is from this respect. He's a really good player. And really good players want to win games. And really good players want to play with other good players. So I think he understands what we did when we overhauled the roster because, in reality, it was helping him. And I think that's the relationship he has with those other guys. You know what I mean? Hey, man, this is what Jaden brings to the table consistently every single night. And then those other guys – are trying to are trying to fit in and play their role the way they're supposed to. You know, if you're supposed to handle the ball, you got to handle the ball. If you if you're supposed to make threes, you got to make threes. Um, so I think that they understand each other. I think they really really like him. I mean, he's an easy guy to like. You know, he's not loud. Um, he's a soft spoken guy. He works really hard, and he puts up numbers every night. So, you know. The other players know that they need him, and he knows he needs those other guys. As Joe Dooley said before the season, the only negative thing about him, he's a Cowboys fan, Coach. So that's that's about it. <laughs> well, that, yeah. But, I mean, uh, yeah. I, I mean, now you just feel sorry for him. <laughs> exactly, I mean, that's, yeah. Th- that, that's the problem. <laughs> Steve Rockerford joining us, Coach. Speaking of Dallas, a uh, long road trip, and, man, a, a tough opponent, maybe – uh, one of the toughest on the schedule. When you look at what SMU has done so far this year and you expect him to do this season, what makes the uh, the Mustangs uh, this uh, this year's Mustangs so tough? Well, I think I think they have been and they are this year really, really good offensively. They're very efficient. They shoot high percentages from the two, high percentages from the three. Um, they're long, they're athletic. They try to play in transition and they really crash the offensive glass, so you know, they're probably the best offensive team we've played. Um, they could very well be the best offensive team in the league. Um, and so that's a challenge. It's a challenge because you got to guard the ball uh, the entire time. you got to keep them out of the paint. And you got to be physical and limit them to one shot. So, it, you know, you're going to have to have uh, a lot of discipline um, in how you defend. And it's going to be individually and it's going to be as a team. So, they're very, very good offensively. As we mentioned uh, earlier, Coach, it's great to have the continuity that your roster has. It's It's got to be weird, and everything is weird. You're adapting and overcoming, but it, how strange is it to be going into conference play after just five games? You kind of use that non-conference to get your rotations right and everything. Now, luckily, again, you, you know this roster. You know what you got with this team, but, but with all that being said, how strange is it to go into league play with just five games under your belt? I mean, like you said, I, I think because of the continuity, I think we do know our team pretty good. I think, you know, you use those non-conference games to um, establish a rotation, establish a starting lineup um, to see what guys can do. I think, you know, we're probably a little further along because we have so many guys back. Um, and, I, and I think the other part of it is is you realize under these circumstances, you know, you're lu- every game you play, you're lucky to play. And, you know, you can look at it as, hey, man, five games isn't a lot of games. There's some people who haven't played any games. Yeah. And, you know, we've been extremely lucky in that from that standpoint. So um, 
it's you know it's a blessing to play. Coach, uh, what have you liked from Noah Faircon so far, and and what do you want to see him improve on as the season moves along? Um, he he's very very talented. Um, you know, God given natural talent. Um, very fast, very quick, fast twitch. Um, can get a shot at any time. I think what he has to improve on is is he's probably got to get a little bit better handle of, of what we're doing offensively. And uh, he's a, a really good defender on the ball. And I think he's got to really develop off the ball defensively. Uh, and when he does that, he, he will, he'll be probably hard to say, but he'll, play, he'll, he'll be really, really, really good. He'll probably be one of the best guards in this league. We enjoy talking hoops with Steve Rock for. We'll talk some baseball uh, as we move into 2021 with Coach Rock. And also, we both share a love uh, for hats. Coach, when did your love for uh, for fitted hats begin? How, how long have you been a hat collector? Uh, you know what? I've always worn hats. You know, growing up, I've always worn hats. Uh, always liked fitted hats. Um, but I really kind of just, in the last three or four years, I've really started doing it more you know to where i don't really have any hobbies um i don't play golf i don't fish i don't do any of that stuff <laughs> you know nowadays you can order those hats all online they they deliver them right to your door so um i've never really worn different hats i used to always just wear astro hats yeah. because i'm a, such a big fan so what i would i what i was doing uh, was just ordering every single different Astro hat you could find. And now I've kind of just started buying hats that I like and different teams and wearing them. And, you know, give me something to do, man. It's a hobby. I'm with you. It's uh, And it's addicting, uh, like anything. And uh, I don't know, I got a few on the Christmas list uh, this year. What's the hat out there you want uh, this Christmas, Coach? Is there one you, you don't have that you want? You know what? I saw one yesterday. It was an old Braves hat with the with just the feather. Oh yeah. Front. Have yeah. you seen those? Yes, sir. Yep. I saw that one yesterday, and I was like, hmm. I hadn't seen that one before. Um, and other than that, you know, I just kind of I kind of keep my eyes open and keep looking and you know see see what's out there. I have a lot of Raider hats and I have a lot of Astro hats. Yeah. Good deal. Good deal. Coach, we'll let you get back to work. We appreciate your time, as always, here on Pirate Radio. Good luck Wednesday night, and we'll talk to you again down the road, man. All right, Cliff. What about you? What hats are you looking at right now? I I do need a new Braves hat. I like either the feather or the uh, lowercase a with the the, I got one with like navy blue. I want the royal blue, like the real deal, like the uh, the old Hank Aaron. The white panel. Yep. The white panel. panel. Yep. I want that. That there's some uh, some minor league hats. I want I want a uh, a black Carolina Hurricanes hat with the logo. I want that too. Who, who, who's the Hurricanes? What are, you, what are you talking? What does that mean? What is they use? Uh, is that hockey? Yeah. Oh, I don't. I'm not. I, I don't know about that. Well, they got a sweet logo. You'll you'll like the hat. I promise. But uh, I want that too. So that's on my uh, wish list. This holiday. All right, well, get to get to and give me one. <laughs> yes, sir. You got it, Coach. Enjoy the man. We'll talk to you soon. All right, man. See you later. <laughs> All right. Somehow, Steve Rockefeller got a free hat out of that uh, conversation. So, might need to uh, get on the Hurricanes bandwagon. Want one of those uh, to add to the collection? All right. Good basketball talk. Little hat talk there with Coach Rock. We'll take a timeout. Come back. You're ready to wrap up this first hour of Pirate Radio Live on a Monday. We're back with you after this. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Tom Brown from Brown and Wood Buick GMC Truck. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal, to make sure you leave a happy customer. Merry Christmas from the Brown and Wood family. All GMC and Buick models have employee pricing, so you can save up to an average of $7,000 off. And as always, Brown and Wood is the home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the Convention Center, or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. 
This holiday season, remember Jersey Mike's for all your catering needs. Whether it's a private party or you're just feeding the office, Jersey Mike's can take care of it all with five convenient locations serving the Greenville area. Jersey Mike's also has online ordering, contactless pickup, delivery, and in-store takeout. Subs, salads, wraps, and all items are sliced fresh all day, every day. Take a break and enjoy Jersey Mike's. Everybody likes Jersey Mike's. Open 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. Medicare is not one size fits all, but which plan is right for you? Hi, I'm Denise Walker and I'm a licensed insurance agent here in North Carolina. Whether you are turning 65, new to Medicare, or already have a plan, I can help you compare your Medicare options. I can help you find a plan offering low to no monthly premiums, prescription drug coverage, and a wide range of additional benefits like dental, hearing, vision, and more. Call me today at 434-531-5674 to get a no-cost, no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Hey parents, are you racking your brain of what to do for your child's next birthday party? Do you need help with after school care and homework assistance? This is Ashley from the Warrior Zone, Greenville's first ever and only Ninja Warrior training facility. Our authentic Ninja Warrior training facility is the perfect place for birthday parties, team building, youth group nights, and after school care. Our motto at the Warrior Zone is where community, fun, and fitness collide. What are you waiting for? The Warrior Zone, Old Tar Road next to Plant and Sea, and WarriorZone.ninja. The holiday season is upon us, and if you've been naughty or nice this season, well, it doesn't matter at The Naughty Life, because no matter who you are, you can find the perfect gift for anyone. This holiday season, stroll the new and improved streets of downtown Washington. Be sure to visit The Naughty Life for the latest Yeti products, signs, clothing, home decor, and many other unique gift items. Plus, their gift wrapping is fantastic, and my favorite, it's free. The Naughty Life, on Main Street in downtown Washington. Emporium presents a very beer Christmas. Tis the season to be drinking. Fa la 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 la. Jingle beers, jingle beers, jingle all the way. Rocking around the Christmas beer. Have a happy holiday. Give the gift of beer this holiday season. Emporium is offering a special 12 beers of Christmas box. Perfect for any craft beer lover on your list. And the Emporium gift card is always a winner. Christmas cheer awaits you today at Emporium on Dickinson Avenue and on Facebook and Instagram. This football season, prepare your taste buds for the most iconic sports-watching drink of all time, Pepsi. Designed to power even the most passionate of armchair quarterbacks, Pepsi has everything you need to start strong, keep you in the zone, and recover from those triumphant wins. Before, I was just your average football fan. But thanks to Pepsi, I'm a football-watching MVP. Nothing can stop me from cheering my team on to victory or overreacting when the ref makes a bad call. What do you mean he wasn't in? That looks like two feet to me. With refreshing deliciousness, especially formulated to keep your eye on the ball and mouth-watering fizziness to help you power through game day, Pepsi is the premier football-watching beverage. I used to care when Mike cheered so hard he spilled nacho cheese on my carpet or wiped buffalo sauce on my new couch. But thanks to Pepsi, I'm so in the zone, even Mike can't ruin my football party. <sighs> See? Don't even care. So this football season, make Pepsi your go-to game day drink because it's the only drink made for football watching. Pepsi, that's what I like. Pirate Radio. And you write that down, because when you're at East Carolina, you go for it every time. Or you don't coach at East Carolina, you don't come to East Carolina, you don't play at East Carolina with a weak heart. Write it! The Voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour One of Pirate Radio Live. Now, back to the show. Welcome back to the show. Hey, remember that for the latest breaking news, interesting stories, and awesome contests that can make you a winner, be sure to follow Pirate Radio on our social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. As a matter of fact, there's a new article up from Hoist the Colors with Stephen Igo uh, re, uh, talking about uh, Noah Farrakhan and uh, the stage being set for him to be a standout freshman. So you can read that. It's up on our social media websites. Once again, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at PR927FM. Join the close to 50,000 followers today at PR927FM. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Clip Rock. All right. The sun decided to come out, Charlie. Oh, my goodness. Although it is still cold outside and apparently getting colder. The cold front. Well, they had said the temperature was going to drop after all that rain. Yeah. So. 
and uh, it was coming down quite a bit earlier today. Ronnie Woodward has well, Ronnie doesn't entered the know, building. Should he come in or not? Yeah, come on in. <laughs> he is standing at the door going, should I come in? Come, come, in, in. Dude, dude. Come, come on in. in. Come on in. Although this is not your segment yet, Ronnie. Oh, man. You're on next segment. We are wrapping up the hour here. Okay. And then, so you're not even here. Okay. But you're here. Uh, we are taking bets on what time this computer will be done with its Windows update. Uh, I've got 513. Shirley has 523. Chandler has 447. Redbeard playing the home edition has chimed in and said 415. Ooh. So I don't know, Redbeard. We're at 21% right now. Yours is not looking good. Mike on Facebook Live says 419. And Josh on Facebook Live says 435. So Interesting. I still say 523. It's going to really I know have how to, these bad boys work. It's going to have to pick up. Now, at some point, it'll like get to 52 or something and then just like sitting go there. all the way to 100. Well, mm-hmm. just sitting here now. I'm saying at some point... No, it'll go from like 21 to 53, and then it'll stop and sit there. Well, I mean, this thing, this is the biggest game we have of the day. This is a big ball game here. It's a big ball game. Try to figure out. Uh, Shirley, before we move on to Hour 2 and Ronnie Woodward, uh, what are your news and notes that you have today? Okay, let's quickly run down. Um, Of course, we talked about this earlier. Washington is out. Oregon is in for the Pac-12 championship game. Uh, Due to COVID issues in Washington, they have zero offensive linemen available to play in this game, which is why Washington is out. So, um, Also, Louisiana Tech has accepted a bid to the New Orleans Bowl. They'll face Georgia Southern on December 23rd. Stanford's game against Arizona that is scheduled for this Saturday will be held in Santa Cruz because, of course, areas of California are still on lockdown. Uh, The game between Louisiana Monroe and Troy has been canceled. That game was scheduled to be played Thursday night due to Louisiana Monroe having COVID issues. Troy almost knocking off Coast. Still Carolina over the weekend, by yeah, the way. exactly. The ACC announced that they have hired Northwestern Athletic Director Jim Phillips as its next commissioner, replacing the retired John Swafford. Which, by the way, uh, John Swafford, the only commissioner that the ACC has had, and this is the first time they've gone outside the conference to find a new athletic director. And Gardner Minshew is back as starting quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars. His uh, trajectory right now is a lot like ECU. He's in, he's out. out. He's in. There was a report this week. He hurt himself. He's like begging to play. Like it sounds a lot like when he was here and splitting time uh, at ECU. All right. uh, Thank you for that. Shirley Rhodes will take a time out, come back. We will talk about the Jake Verity news. We'll talk some pirate hoops and more with Ronnie Woodward from the Daily Reflector. He joins us just like he is now inside the Pirate Radio studios after this. Banking is banking until service is not the same. This is Eric Clark from Select Bank and Trust, and this year has been unusual, but we have continued to focus on what has always been important to us, our customers. When businesses needed access to the Paycheck Protection Program, our team of local bankers worked around the clock to successfully keep our customers open and their employees working. Wouldn't you like to deal with a bank that is responsive to your needs, can make local decisions, and cares about you, the customer? We are Select Bank and Trust. Bank local. Bank select. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Let us help you get back to business. This is Donald Stocks and Justin Judge of PIP of Eastern North Carolina. We're ready to assist your business with branded PPE. Would you like face masks with your logo? We can do that. Plus custom social distancing signage. Now is the time to ramp up your marketing efforts. Whether it's cutting edge, contactless, touchless marketing, or traditional direct mail, we can do it all. We are PIP of Eastern North Carolina. It's bow time. How do you like your steak cooked? How about country? Because Bojangles is serving up their own brand of fine dining. We're talking thick, hearty, mouth-watering steak country fried to perfection and served up on a fresh and fluffy buttermilk beauty. And right now, you can snap up two steak biscuits for $4.50. So put on your fancy pants because Bojangles has steak. It's bow time. Christmas presents are great, but Christmas cash is awesome. This is Vince from Play It Again Sports in Greenville, and it's time for us to help you turn around the stuff in your house into cash. 
Clean out your closets and garages for cash today. We're buying sports equipment for baseball, softball, golf, tennis, lacrosse, hockey, and more. We're buying bicycles, skateboards, snowboards, water skis, treadmills, ellipticals, dumbbells, and more. Play it again sports, you're home for Christmas cash. Just past the Cracker Barrel on Greenville Boulevard. Find us on Instagram and Facebook. Did you know time spent outdoors can help improve your children's health and bring balance to their life? The Outdoor Heritage Advisory Council invites you to join the Patch Program. This program is for any child under the age of 16 and includes activities like fishing, hunting, and hiking. These are just one of the many ways you can earn the exclusive patches from the Outdoor Heritage Council. For more information on how to sign up and get your adventure started, visit OutdoorHeritage.nc.gov. Hey, this is Jay from Villa Verde. Did you know the Villa Verde opened up its second location? Yes, it's Villa Verde Dos on Arlington Boulevard across the hospital. This new location is a fast, casual environment where you can make your own bowls for only $9.95. Choose from our fresh ingredients, from our toppings bars, or enjoy an amazing rotisserie chicken. We promise you can be in and out in less than 15 minutes. For a quick, healthy meal at an affordable price, visit us at Villa Verde Dos on Arlington Boulevard. Villa Verde, a platform for good. There's no better time to drive away with a quality pre-owned car, truck, or SUV from Greenville Auto World. Greenville Auto World is your authorized rough country dealer. We specialize in lift and leveling kits along with custom wheel packages. Whether you're looking for ground clearance or enhancing the appearance of your vehicle, trust our team for your off-road experience. Greenville Auto World, 3840 South Charles Boulevard, across from Hardy's at Bells Fork or GreenvilleAutoWorld.net. Ounces means more meat bounces. Get any papadilla like the new double cheeseburger papadilla for just six bucks. Papa John's. Hey, Pirate fans, the papadillas are part sandwich, part pizza, and only $6 each. The new cheeseburger papadilla is an MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at papajohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, the official pizza of the ECU Pirates. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, W224EI Greenville, WDLX Washington, and W281CH Washington. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Do you think you might have been exposed to COVID-19? Do you think your employees might have been exposed to COVID-19? Our Point Labs at Greenville offer same-day COVID-19 results. No referral is needed, and same-day results are available. Arc Point Labs of Greenville is located across from Vidit Hospital in Executive Circle behind Southern Bank. Call for an appointment or just walk in. Arc Point Labs of Greenville, 215-5688 or arcpointlabs.com. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Clip Rock. All righty. Thank you, Shirley Rhodes. Welcome in. Hour two of Pirate Radio Live here on a Monday. Coming up in a little bit, we'll talk to the big man on campus, Jeff Nadeau, Barstool Sports. The big man on basketball podcast dropped another episode today. We'll get his thoughts on what the line will be when ECU takes on SMU coming up on Wednesday night. And uh, we'll talk some more hoops, some football with him. We'll talk... About that now with Ronnie Woodward uh, from the Daily Reflector. Ronnie, how you doing? I'm good. No, uh, no game to cover this past weekend. It's kind of yeah. weird, right? It was, it was nice. I was going to tweet about it, but then I forgot because um, I was busy enjoying not having a game to cover. <laughs> um, yeah, no football, no basketball. When was the last time we didn't have a game to cover? Probably mid September, right? It's been a while. It's been a while for sure. Before football started. And uh, as Coach Rock said, like, it's good that – because I asked the question, it's kind of awkward to only have five games and then you get right to league play. Yeah. Like, usually you have a bunch of games to get your rotations right, figure out what you got. Uh, and he said, yeah, but uh, we were lucky. Some team – Temple hadn't played a game, I Yeah, think. exactly. I mean, so, yeah. You're, you're lucky to get whatever game you can in. And at this point, ECU, and, and credit to Joe Dooley and the staff for adding Wesleyan, adding the other game they added. Oh, the Charlotte. They added. All right, well, yeah, yeah. Charlotte, yeah. As far as when they backed out of the – or opted out of the Gulf Coast. Yeah. 
Their okay. opponent, uh, Indiana State, opted out. Yeah. And so ECU opted out, and yeah. I guess that event went on with a few teams. I think it did, but I think they were Florida-based. I think it was right. more or less the travel side of it is yeah. what obviously became the big obstacle there. Yeah, I'm not, um, uh, I don't so. want to get on a bus and yeah. go to Florida. Yeah. So. so I did a story, I had a big Sunday story yesterday, talked to my John Gilbert conversation and Ryan Robinson and some of the coaches and players and stuff. Um just about the transition from football to basketball and the different challenges and kind of how things go on, that type of thing. But I looked it up and, well, didn't look it up, kind of just thought about it. You would too. But the ECU's only had two things affected since they started. It's like when they, when they started their first football game, September 26th, they opted out of the Florida Gulf, case, Gulf mm-hmm. Coast Showcase. And the Belmont Abbey game was canceled because of Belmont Abbey COVID issues. That's it. Women's hoops played their schedule uh, completely. Football played it once they started completely. No changes at all. And just those men's basketball. It's pretty crazy. Honestly, they're lucky. It's pretty. You know, Ryan Robbins said, "Hey, we're going to have some games canceled. Yeah, yeah like there, there's no quite or postponed or whatever. Like they, they've gotten pretty lucky." Um, but you know, Kim McNeil gave me a really good quote for that when I asked her about how have you been able to play your games, and she said um, they didn't. They didn't get an airplane. You know, they purposely they bust the only places they needed to go. That was it. Mm-hmm. Um, and she said we've been fortunate. But the other side of it is the opponents have been, you know, like even if it you're doing things two, right, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, so it, it's really a, a math game that eventually isn't going to work in your favor, um, and I think that's going to be a key, not a key, but something to watch because, you know, I, I, the timing of why I kind of want to write that is they're about to start league play, yeah, and you're not busing anywhere now. You know, every single trip is going to be a plane trip. Uh, so it, it's going to be interesting for sure. I mean, it, we'll see how it goes. So uh, they've been really fortunate at this point. Hopefully that doesn't mean it all just hits like an avalanche right. at one time for ECU. But uh, they've they've gotten lucky and been doing the right things and, and not flying to this point. So we'll see. And as you said, they got the games in. Now we did see the effects from it, though, in the Navy game with East Carolina because their starting quarterback, yeah, Colt Naylor, was not able to play. And then the game at Temple – which I thought for about 35 to 40 minutes yeah. that that game was not going to be played. Uh, but they're able to get that in. And Temple, at that point, was on their fifth-string quarterback. Temple so then quit. Yeah, pretty <laughs> like much. Because they, like, they were supposed to play Cincinnati the next week, and it was like, no. <laughs> they did, that was their last game. Wow. So, you, they didn't play. Like, that was it. And I used them as an example a moment ago. I still don't think they've played a basketball game. Unless yeah, they I played this weekend. I honestly hadn't even paid attention enough or, or looked, so that's a good point. Because every time I look at the AAC standings, like they're sitting there at 0 and 0. They're scheduled to play, I guess, their first game this Saturday against uh, NJIT, the New Jersey, New Jersey Institute, Institute of Technology. That is correct. Nailed and then uh, and then they got Houston, their second game of the season wow. on the road. So I don't know what, uh, what the. And. Moving forward, when we get into league play, it's unlikely that if a non-conference game was canceled or, or postponed, it would not be made up. It would just be canceled. Yeah. How yeah, about so. with league games? You know, do those get rescheduled, or do you just kind of see what your record is before you go into the the conference tournament? And another one on top of that, Ronnie, is if a conference game is canceled or postponed, moved back. Does Joe Dooley then look around and say, all right, are any teams available to play yeah. when we were going to play this Wednesday? I'm, I'm interested to see, once you get into conference play, are you trying to add non-conference games if you have a game canceled, or do you just punt and get yeah. ready for your next conference game? I would think just logistically you would get ready for your next game. And you'll probably deal with what football has dealt with just on a larger scale of – not everybody's going to play the same number of games. It's going to right. come down to winning percentage. And that's fine. That might be seven games for one team and 11 for another. What Before you know, 2020, I would have said that's – no. Everybody's got to play the same. This is what we've done yeah. my entire life. Yeah. I don't like change. Now after seeing it happen in football, I'm like, whatever. Just yeah. play what you can play. And see what happens. If you're lucky enough to get to the championship game, good. Uh, maybe the team that is going to the championship won't be able to play like Washington yeah. in the Pac-12, just and like you could play. <laughs> so, like, just see what happens. Just yeah. try to get the games in and, and see what happens. I wonder, too, I was talking uh, with my sister, actually. She's a big Duke fan. I was talking with her the other day. Um, 
I wonder with the tournament, this is long term and it, who knows, but like, I, you know, the, like, my thought was, well, maybe they should just play the regular season and who's ever in your first place, your regular season it might end up goes that to way. March Madness. That's your automatic buy. You know, she's really logical about this stuff and it's like, not, you know, it's just like, are they really going to play conference tournaments? You know, if you want to have a bubble for March Madness, do you really want these teams playing in separate cities a week before? And then what happens if your first round, like March Madness team, can't play? The, you know, like yep. I, I, so the conference tournament thing is going to be interesting to me because I was telling her it's like, well, that makes sense for the ACC and Duke. You know, like Duke's in, Carolina's in. Yeah. But like when you're the whatever america east that's how they determine who makes it you know the one team you know that the conference tournament is everything well i also think the conference tournament will be easy for like the american east the big south where the teams are can bust to a place for the most part but still you're Uh, interacting with other teams then you're sending them to san antonio to play kansas or kentucky no maybe they go old school here and uh your regular season regular season goes yeah and you get the teams tested and if you can't pass the test, then the second place team from your league. You know, at the conference tournament thing is going to be interesting, which that, I don't want to say screws, but that's not good for a team like ECU, you know, or a team that can go on the miracle conference tournament run. Well, right now yeah. it is. We're, fi- we're, <laughs> yeah. we're on pace to go undefeated. So, um, uh, yeah, how you determine, no matter what it is, who makes the NCAA tournament, uh, the big pitcher is going to be, I think, really interesting. And I think really... Yeah, when you're plugging in teams and stuff, it makes more sense for football than it does for basketball. So, or better, I'll take another step. What if Michigan State wins its third round game but can't play its fourth round game? You know what I'm saying? Like within the weekend, like they can play Friday but not Sunday, or you know, then what do you do? So, yeah. Um, it's gonna be interesting. That's down the road. For now, I'm with you. You play. You <laughs> Let's play just hope you ECU play plays SMU wins. When you can play, and you you move on. North Florida uh, hit some threes, Man. Ronnie, and uh, stayed Ospreys. in that game. And then uh, Brandon Suggs, the big bucket at the end, takes it to the rack, gets the layup, and uh, Pirates take the lead and and go on from there and win the game. But that was a battle, and uh, once again, you can simulate it as much as you want to in practice but getting those uh those real game opportunities where you have to make plays in the end ecu's uh done that twice now to pick up wins yeah joe dooley made a good point i think a really good point after the game um of uh north florida had played at miami played nc state played florida state even played high point you know a good program they went into <clears throat> Minji's as a game that they thought they could win you know hey here's a, here's not that like we always say, every team goes into every game thinking you can win. But when you're going at Florida State and they're ranked top 10, 15, whatever, like they they probably knew that was a, a tough you know a tough one to. You're not out. as worried about ECU, yeah, after like, you've played a top exactly. 15 team. I thought they had, you know that they played that way. They played shot it really well early. Well, they play a style too. That's like all right, whatever. Yeah. we're just gonna jack up threes. Yep, and. I mean, they had an awful possession at the end of the first half, um, and the coach uh, really got into the guy. There was less than 35 seconds left in the half, and they got on transition. There's like 25, mm-hmm. 30 seconds, and the dude just jacked up a three in transition, missed it. It was number one. I don't remember his name. It was number one on the wing. And ECU got the ball, and then ECU had the last possession. And he he, said, he yelled at the guy literally while ECU was bringing the ball up, like, look at the clock, man. It was like – Optimist basketball, you know, age nine, ten, like hold the ball, like don't shoot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's their style, and um, yeah, I thought ECU responded well to it, and they've played in some close games, you know, from Charlotte to Wilmington, obviously North Florida, they've won them, and I think that speaks mainly to Jaden Gardner. To be honest, you know, he's battled some foul trouble, but they've gotten him the ball when they needed to, and you're right, Suggs hit a, a huge shot. Um, it hit some. You had some big moments late in the fourth quarter too. So it, they've been fun to watch. You know, I mean, and again, it's not. How you say late in the fourth quarter? Did I like? It, have you been watching <laughs> like too a, much women's <laughs> basketball <laughs> or women's NBA? Yeah, uh, <laughs> late in the second quarter. <laughs> Half. Half. <laughs> I'm throwing off, man. There's a lot going on this week. Somebody, um, uh, oh, it was Bryce Williams. We were watching the women's game when he was here last week. He was like, well, why do they play quarters and we play halves? 
what is the difference for you like watching a game is there any difference time wise or really a different flow wise uh not really i i don't remember now to be honest what the reasoning was for mm-hmm. the women i really don't yeah so yeah i'm not not sure. Not a big difference. Yeah, though. it's really not. It's not. I mean, the time is the exact same. It's not like it's a longer, shorter game. Yeah. And do they do? It. Do you know if they do like one media timeout per ten? Is that uh, how the they do it? Media timeouts are different. Yeah. Um, and free throws are different too. Because oh yeah. Like we noticed that. I think five. You shoot maybe. Yeah, you do per. So like, there's a lot. Maybe not a lot more, but I, I venture to say mathematically, there's probably more free throws in the women's game, and, and I think there's probably a little more fouls too. But. Um, that is maybe the strategic part, but as far as like the time of game, yeah, it I don't know, it really doesn't drastically make a difference. All right, just throwing you a bone here with your yeah, quarter stuff. Threw me off, man. That you, was, uh, uh, I forget what I was saying, <laughs> but big shot by Brandon Suggs. We're all, uh, and they've beaten decent teams. I think that's what I was going to say. Like, a source says they were trying to make the women's basketball games faster. Okay, makes sense. All right, I and I guess. feel like they have maybe, but. All right. Um, remember some of the ECU schedules where they got off to a decent start in hoops, and it was like Virginia Wise. Yeah. Uh, who, and I know they played Wesley, but still, I mean, Charlotte, Wilmington, and the Ospreys uh, were decent. The, the Ospreys have the coolest nickname they're going to play all year, so I'm going to give North Florida credit. Probably so. Um, I mean, I think Highlanders is pretty cool. Better than the Ospreys? No, I know. Let's just so like up there. Them. And their style. I'll say 49ers, Seahawks, battling bishops. ECU has played I mean, one heck of a nickname a, slate exactly. thus far. It's been an interesting schedule. And they've, they <laughs> from that lost. regard. So, well, I, mean, I will think we'll see Wednesday, obviously, for sure, an uptick in competition and talent and athleticism and whatnot. This is a whole new animal, yeah. I think. Yeah. Literally uh, and figuratively. And I think if it's competitive, win or lose, it's a. It's a positive sign, uh, especially on the road, because we've known ECU's history in hoops and road games in the conference. Um, so, yeah, I mean, shoot, they're 5-0. and Go down there and see what happens. Have a safe flight. Me and I go have bad mojo of flying to Dallas from that one football season. Hopefully their Airbnb or hotel or whatever they're staying at doesn't get canceled on the flight. That happened to me one time. <laughs> that would be a bummer. Game. It's not fun. What's your guess at the line for Wednesday? Let's see. Um, eight and a half, nine, nine and a half. Okay. What do you? Think? You're right around. I go. I went. Pro- I went. Maybe too high. Twelve. Yeah. We uh, and I'll ask Jeff Nadeau coming up next segment what he thinks, but. It's going to be around the 10 mark, I, I think, would say. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a safe bet. When it comes out. And uh, and we'll see if the Pirates can hang with SMU. One thing, and uh, we'll talk about it with uh, Jeff Nadeau in a moment, SMU won a tight one on the road at Dayton and have played three teams Then they're clearly better than, and they've blown all them out. So yeah, they score a lot. They have done what they're supposed to do. Yep. Basically. Joe Dooley said today, he thinks he has the best offense in the league. Um so yeah, it's it's a challenge. Uh, it's almost like football. I feel like they started with UCF, and UCF might not have been the best team in the league, but no, they yeah. had that style. Yeah, score. You know, it, it's a it's a unique challenge. It's one of the toughest team. games on your schedule yeah. that you're getting right out of the because gate. Of their style of play. I mean, so there with Houston. Yep. Maybe I don't know where I don't know what Memphis is this year, but yeah. maybe Cincinnati. I don't know, but SMU right now is right behind Houston, I think. I think Houston's by themselves at the top. Yeah, they're kind of like Cincinnati in football. Yeah. Similar deal. Yeah, you're and then there's a tier down. Those, yeah, that second tier that plays a style that is is unique. You know, just the way they get up and down and score. So, All right, uh, Ronnie, what do you think of the Jake Verity news today? Yeah, I, it's interesting um, – just because remember like senior day the last not whatever the last football game that they honored the guys and we were told that day and they i think officials wanted to emphasize emphasize those were guys that had definitely decided they were done at that point and that didn't mean that others wouldn't add to the list which is that those guys were ready to have the ceremony and that type deal so that makes sense if you look at what's happened since then blake prohl you know, from all indications, it had, had already made up his mind pretty much, but he didn't do the walk and dance and deal. You know, and maybe Verity was on the fence, and now he's decided. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, 
he's a kicker. Do a lot of kickers get drafted? Not usually. Um, but <coughs> kind of the same thing with Blake Pearl. I think he's in a like he's not going to improve his draft stock. Yeah. For with another year. But you go ahead and sign on the team. Yeah. You know, it's almost like baseball. Like the major leagues, and not or not the major leagues, but like the knock against high school guys who go to college is, yeah, you're improving your draft. You have a chance to improve your draft stock, but you're also getting older in the process. And if you're good enough to go in high school, Which go. kind of silly. You can start your clock. We're talking like two years, three years, but, but that, that's the what they look at. No, sport, that's yeah, right. So, like, I wonder if that's coming into play with some of this. Like, you know, is Jake Verity, Blake Pearl, really going to skyrocket their stock in one year, or are they better being a 22 year old receiver or kicker than a 23 i mean i you know i'm spitballing but in baseball that's a big deal well like your age is a big deal some of the um and uh, chandler by the way uh ryan wilson's mock draft the panthers just selected mac jones Return quarterback of out of alabama mac so with no k have fun with that um what was i saying oh blake pro Return so yeah right <laughs> blake pro part of the decision is to well, there's not going to be as many. Like it's a smaller pool of receivers, yeah. so I'm so going to try to go. Right and, yeah. Like there will definitely be a smaller pool of kickers. If everybody's allowed back, you would assume that most are going to just stay, right? Yeah, I would think. I would yeah. think there would be a uh, a smaller pool of ch- of kickers to, to uh, new kickers to come into the league. And again, these guys just get recycled. Yeah, every single you can year get signed out of nowhere. He's just got to get on one team, really. Yeah, make a few <laughs> kicks and stay. Yeah, you know. So, stay for a year, you'll miss a kick, they'll cut you, but then you'll get picked up by another team and in a few be weeks. kicking yeah. Yeah, the next week. So. He did struggle this year. Maybe the only thing, the surprising aspect is that he didn't have, I mean, he had a record-breaking season, like career-wise and points-wise and whatnot, but obviously he had some blocks and, and some things that were a little uncharacteristic, I guess. Or, yeah. Um, so maybe the surprising aspect is that, but again, if you got your degree, if you're ready to move on, you know, somebody used to always tell me this. Some people just don't like college. Mm-hmm. I, I might have been on that list. Like, does he want to go through the winter conditioning to go to class to figure out where yeah. you want to take post grad classes and go take tests and you know all that, um, just to try and kick for another season or catch passes for another season but you know like if i had the option of working at pirate radio you know rather than like interning and doing school i would have just worked at pirate radio exactly so some guys love it you know hey i'll take the class and whatever walk around get to do your thing whatever be the big man on campus whatever it is uh unfortunately the kicker is not really the big man on campus some people are ready just shoot your shot (laughs) go and see what happens professionally you know um especially if they've gotten their degree i like that side of it like yeah. if you've graduated you have a degree where it doesn't work out you did what 95 percent of people go to college for anyways to get a degree and start your professional life well this is their form of doing that they're just football players instead of teachers or radio people or journalists or whatever you know journalists whatever it is. this is their time they think they want to do it so um i think ecu will be fine they have i know they have some younger guys obviously who can kick yeah. If that doesn't work out, you can I guarantee you can get a grad transfer in the summer or whatever and, and put a band aid on it for a year. Somebody off the out. uh women's soccer team. Yeah. Could come in. You know? <laughs> what is Wednesday gonna be like, Ronnie? Because it used to be like a big deal and we would like update on social media and when each guy signed and everything and we'd have a full recap we'd have a press conference they'd throw a freaking party over oh, yeah. there and yeah like, it was a, a big day signing day what is that going to be like and and again we're in the early signing period but that last year i feel like maybe the year before whenever it started has taken over for the traditional february Definitely. signing signing day for the most part but what about in covid year like what Obviously, we're not going to be gathered in a group asking questions to Mike Houston. We'll, I'm assume have, assuming have a Zoom and. I would think. But how many yeah. players are going to be? You think signing the dotted line on Wednesday? Yeah, I think you know, in a wide range, ten to fifteen. You could probably up that to twelve to fifteen, twelve to sixteen, maybe somewhere in that range for ECU. Just depending. I mean, obviously they added some guys, some commitments over the weekend. Um, it's kind of been in that 10-ish range if you add a few. That's where I'm kind of spitballing 12 to 15, 13 to 16, something like that. Um, 
I could just say like 14 and pick a number, but I'm going to keep it. You're really going on a lot of <laughs> options here. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, last year we had they had the party in December for mm-hmm. fans with the highlight video, and we did a right. press conference. Yeah. But COVID wise, yeah, I'm wondering the same thing. I'm assuming we'll probably get an email maybe tomorrow would make sense. But so that's going to change because of COVID. How about? But you think as far as the amount of players, it's going to be pretty much the same. I think. I mean, unless it's lower, just based on because you got a lot of factors here. Coming back, you, you know, like uh, the, some of these guys. How many of these guys that are signing played football in 2020? Yeah, that I mean, I believe Mike Houston said I, almost I mean, all of their players that he's expecting to sign did. Yeah, but that that leaves out a lot of North Carolina kids. Like yeah. the, the whole thing is fascinating that uh, there are kids with, with signing day coming up on Wednesday that have not played football in well over a year. Yeah, and some are getting ready to play if the schools allow it in, in February. February. Yeah. So. Well, and if you look at ECU's commitment list, I think when I looked Friday or some point during the weekend, I don't think there's a single in-state guy. Um, there's some guys with ties or they were at, you know, whatever, but there's not your just traditional high school kid from North Carolina. So I wonder if that plays into it or played into it yeah. or not. Um, but I think the other factor is I think in general – classes for all these college teams is going to be lower a lower number of guys than usual because you have seniors coming back exactly Um, you have the grad transfer market that you want to save if you you know i mean mike houston told you all that what last week when he was here hey we want to save four five six scholarships for transfers we've already seen that if you count the unc kid the safety from Mm -hmm. the weekend you know well there's one of them um there's you know there they probably want to hold a few of those and probably a lot of teams do so you know usually we're talking about 25 or in the 20s 22 to 25 this year if we're talking 14 15 there's your answer right there there's less scholarships teams are willing to give out right now but i still think it's going to serve as like the main signing day you know you have a few in february maybe you have some transfers you add and there's fine large what you do but um the bulk of their players will get um, <clears throat> we'll get signed December or get to signed Wednesday. Mm, coming up Wednesday, uh, early Wednesday. signing day. My yeah, we got that. We got hoops. Is Wednesday, happy anniversary. So, so you got Sarah a lot going on. Thrilled about yeah. college football signing day and hoops at eight p.m. Trust me, that's going to go really well. So maybe yeah, an early dinner dinner reservation has been made okay good i got i plotted this thing out really well <laughs> good good and deal. we'll see if it sticks to schedule and it can't be late anyway because of uh the curfew so yeah so go ahead and get that out of the way yeah i think get i'm your, in good shape get your hoops i told my kids in that last week when he was here i was like i need to know what time this press conference is yeah. going to be he said well what time do you want i said as early as possible because I got a 6.30 dinner reservation. Um, so we'll know if Mike day. Houston likes you or not, depending on yeah. what time this if press conference me is. With the, if it's like 5, 5.30 he, press he conference. He doesn't care about you at all. It means I'm low on the, the pecking <laughs> order. If it's like 1, I'm, I'm sitting pretty. All right, Ronnie, uh, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah. Enjoyed it here on a Monday. That flew by. It did. It went by fast. We did Quick one question segment. for you. Yeah, go ahead. What are you rooting for this weekend with the college football playoff? Well, Ellerby seems to think that if Florida wins, they still won't get into the playoff. Oh, there's no chance. They're out? Yeah. The SEC Florida? doesn't get an automatic bid anymore? All right, well. I'm rooting for question. that to happen. That's not going to happen. There's one thing that can't happen. Your question was. Okay, all right, all right, all right. There's multiple things that can't happen. Northwestern can't beat Ohio State. I would say that's more likely than Florida beating Alabama. Hmm. Maybe so. They're both very, very unlikely. Um, the score is worse. I don't, I don't know. I, I, it doesn't matter what happens in the ACC game. I want Notre Dame to win because that'll so knock Clemson, Clemson out. out. I want yeah. Notre Dame to That's win. That's the kicker. I don't think people... All right, here's what I want to happen. I want Florida, Notre Dame, Northwestern to all win. So Cincinnati can get in? They still won't get in, but sure. Iowa State will beat Oklahoma. Iowa State's ahead yeah, of them. Yeah, the Big 12 thing's lame. So then you say, okay, well, I want Oklahoma to win then, but then Oklahoma will move ahead of Cincinnati. If Cincinnati's out. Yeah. They're out, out. I think if Notre Dame beats Clemson, you got to get a fourth team in there because you have Ohio State, Notre Dame, Alabama. 
A&M is kind of the wild card. They're playing Tennessee. If Cincinnati, if A&M loses and, and Clemson loses, they're in. No, they're not. Why wouldn't they be in? Did you factor in Iowa State? I'm not worried about them. I think if Cincinnati... They're ahead of Cincinnati. I but I think if Cincinnati wins, they'll they'll jump them. I could be wrong. You're definitely wrong. Iowa State, if Iowa State beats Oklahoma, isn't that the game? That's the Big 12 championship, right? It is. Yeah. Cincinnati... Like, there's no scenario you can come up with for Cincinnati. I think they got a shot. I think right. it's, it starts with Notre Dame has to be Clemson. I like that. Uh, I hope the folks in Oklahoma are listening that you value a win over Tulsa, Oklahoma, no, think, more than a win over Oklahoma. I think the undefeated season factor would kick in there. I wish, but I just don't. More so than, like, that one win. Why didn't it in the recent poll? I mean, you're right. I don't know. The, the Cincinnati got in trouble not playing – a game that should have played BYU instead of BYU playing in Myrtle Beach. It should have been BYU against Cincinnati, and they really would have helped themselves. But they had yeah. COVID issues, so yeah, I don't know. We'll see. All right. I so think uh, we're both rooting for some chaos one way or the other. I can't decide. I, you know me, I wouldn't mind <coughs> just it to go chalk and go <laughs> Alabama, Ohio State, well, Clemson, Notre Dame again. It's not going to matter what play. we want. We're, uh, th- that's yeah. what's going to happen. Like, I, I really thought that Florida, if they'd have won and beat Bama, we could have had two SEC teams, two two ACC ACC teams. That was my ultimate. (laughs) Like, Florida wins a close game, (laughs) and you have Florida, Alabama, Clemson, Clemson, Notre Dame, and Clemson, Notre Dame have to play again for the third time. Um, And people would have been so mad. (laughs) But I don't think that's... Alabama's going to beat them by 40. We're going to have a side bet on that. Well, no, (laughs) I don't... They're going to beat them by a million. Okay, Um, I'm not betting against Bama. I can tell you that. So right. we'll figure something out, but it should be Alabama against Ohio State, Clemson, win, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's gonna be a high, Alabama versus. Well, they're not gonna Ohio put State the Clemson. ACC teams playing against each other. I wouldn't think in the first round. Yeah, so I think it'd be Alabama, Notre Dame, Alabama Ohio ACC State, loser, Clemson, and then Ohio whatever. State ACC winner. Yeah, that's what it's. All right. Thank you, Ronnie. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back. Jeff Nadeau, the big man on campus. Sports to Sports joins us when we return after this. Midway through bath time, and two medium, two topping Domino's pizzas for five ninety nine each have begun their drive to the Smith's front door. That's a GPS enabled custom delivery alert, folks. The newest improvement to the Domino's tracker saying Domino's will be there in two minutes. They're calling an audible. Bath time's now rinse time. They've got one kid dry, two kids dry. The pizzas are here. They made it to the door. The kids are cleaning up. The new Domino's tracker with GPS worked again. Two at a minimum. Pan pizza will be extra. Ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. For the latest from the world of golf, tune in every Saturday morning from 8 to 10 for the Golf Shop Radio Show, presented by GolfNickers.com, the world's leader in traditional golf apparel. Hosts Mark Greenhelch and Matt Blanchard talk golf from tee to green and everything in between. If you like golf, you're going to love Golf Shop Radio. Before you tee up, drop on in. Welcome to the Golf Shop. At Tiebreakers, we pride ourselves on serving big, big juicy wings. I'm talking big and juicy. Our chickens are the same ones that kick sand in the other chickens' faces. If our chickens played football, they'd be linebackers. The competition's chickens, they'd be skinny little kickers. Trade those kickers in for linebackers. Tiebreakers is open every day at 11 a.m. Follow Tiebreakers on Facebook and Instagram for daily updates. Holiday time is here, and Santa isn't the only one with a very long to-do list. We have what you need to help you get to all the places you need to go with all the things you need to take. Phelps Chevrolet in Greenville. Santa's sleigh is the ultimate all-terrain vehicle, but it's not for sale. No worries, we have trucks, crossovers, and SUVs that can handle just about any road or job you can imagine in style and comfort. Phelps Chevrolet in Greenville. Come in and get you one. 
The time is now to celebrate your holiday fiesta at Chico's Mexican Restaurant in downtown Greenville. Chico's is the perfect place to get all your dear amigos together for some Mexican food and fun this holiday fiesta season. Call Chico's now to make a reservation for any large or small fiesta with all of your amigos. Also, remember to put a smile on your amigos' faces this holiday season with the perfect gift, a Chico's gift card. Chico's Mexican Restaurant in downtown Greenville. Happy holidays from Chico's. Hey, Pirate fans, this is Cliff Godwin. Baseball is back at Clark LeClaire Stadium. We will be hosting several youth camps over the next couple months. All camps will be at Clark LeClaire Stadium, and all camps are open to participants between the ages of 7 and 13. Make sure to check out our camp website at cliffgodwinbaseballcamp.com for all camp details and registration information. And, of course, go Pirates! What the heck was that? Oh, that was Chuck from Naughty Dog. They just did a new beer release, and he gets so excited he runs around town screaming and telling everyone. I told him I would cut this new commercial instead and let people know to get to Naughty Dog this holiday season to try their new beers, that they're open seven days a week, and that they're doing a fundraiser to drop off food and toys for dogs. Go to Naughty Dog Brewing Company on Main Street in downtown Winterville today, and maybe you'll see Chuck there screaming. Follow Naughty Dog on Facebook and Instagram for more fun. Cold weather is here, and some families in our area need help to stay warm. Greenville Utilities' Neighbor to Neighbor program provides help for those who need temporary assistance with their heating costs. You can make a difference. Your tax-deductible donation can be added to your GUC bill each month, or you can make a one-time donation. And GUC matches all donations up to $20,000 each year. Consider helping a neighbor stay warm this winter with GUC's Neighbor to Neighbor program. For more information, call 752-7166 or visit GUC.com. This is Coach Steve Shankweiler, offensive line coach for East Carolina University football, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Orthopedics East and Sports Medicine Center of Greenville has a new extended care clinic hours, and they are now open Saturdays and Sundays from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m., so you can avoid the emergency department for any urgent orthopedics care. For more information, call 757-2663 or visit orthoeast.com. Orthopedics East, providing services to Eastern North Carolina and the Pirate Nation for more than 35 years. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Clip Rock. All right, back with you, PRL, Hour 2. Chad on Twitter says, when uh, Clip's voice gets high-pitched, that's when you know someone is talking crazy. My voice doesn't get (laughs) high-pitched. Maybe it does. Uh, Redbeard, you have been eliminated from the computer update challenge. He said 415. We are sitting at 21%. (laughs) It is not moving. (laughs) Josh, you have been eliminated. Uh, Mike has been eliminated. I'm about to be eliminated. Chandler in five minutes. is about to be eliminated. Uh, all right, let's head out to the uh, Fixed NC Live Line and talk to the big, the big man on campus from Barstool Sports. He joins us here on PRL. Big man, how you doing? Pretty good. Clip. How are you? Hey, good doing you. doing great. Good to uh, to have you back on and talk some basketball with you and. Uh, Boring weekend for me uh, from a college basketball standpoint because East Carolina, for the first time since they uh, started up play, did not have a weekend game, but they had plenty of time to get ready for their next opponent and will be their toughest opponent to date, the SMU Mustangs. They are scoring a lot of points. As you know, Jeff, the Pirates will go into this game Wednesday night at 5-0. and Steve and I go and I were trying to guess a line, giving our best guess at what the line will be on Wednesday night. I said 12, Igo said 8 or 9, so we met in the middle somewhere around 10. Uh, first of all, Jeff, uh, before we get your thoughts on the game, what kind of uh, spread do you think we'll see Wednesday night for ECU at SMU? Yeah, I, I would say you guys are kind of right in the middle. I, I would say 10.5, 10, something like that, maybe even 11. Um, obviously, as you said, SMU a very good basketball team, so I would say 10.5. What, uh, what makes them good, Jeff? What, what do you like about the Mustangs this year? Yeah, I, I think they could be one of the more undervalued teams in the country right now. Um, you know, I was really kind of unsure of what they would be after that 
three games to start the season against Southland competition, easy wins in all of them. But, you know, one thing they did do, and, and this is something that I always respect, they beat all those teams into oblivion. Every game was, yeah. you know, by 25 or more. They scored into the 90s and 100s. You know, and then they went on the road and, and took care of business against a good Dayton team. I mean, Dayton is not what they were last year, but they're still a very good basketball team. They're very good defensively. Um, you know, and I think people have to realize, I mean, SMU is still playing without, uh, you know, certain players. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Everett Ray hasn't played. They lost um, Tyson Jolly, who I believe is transferred at that point. So, um, you know, they don't, they don't have their full complement, but they're balanced. They're very good offensively. they got a good transfer in Darius McNeil, who's starting to get into game shape. Kendrick Davis, I think, is one of the most underappreciated guards in the country. Uh, they're really good, and they're very good at home. Uh, they've always been very good at Moody Coliseum. Uh, East Carolina, you know, they're going to really be tested in this game because you know, ECU luckily hasn't played anyone real good. Uh, North Florida just kind of stopped shooting the ball in the second half. Uh, they stopped making shots, and, and you know, East uh, or UNC Wilmington kind of just fell apart in overtime. So this is going to be a major step up. East U is going to have to keep shooting the ball the way they have. And, you know, after a six-day break, who knows if that will happen. Talking to the big man on campus, Jeff, and they do we'll continue to get you set for ECU-SMU as we uh, go out throughout the week here on Pirate Radio. Heard from Steve Rockaford, ECU assistant coach, earlier in today's show. We'll talk to former Pirate center Neil Punt coming up on Tuesday. The voice of the Pirates, Jeff Charles, on Wednesday. Day. So, plenty of preview uh, coming up for this ball game tonight. Jeff in college hoops, bit of a light card uh, games involving top twenty-five teams. You got Rutgers taking on Maryland, and that's at six o'clock. And then later on, nine o'clock, Marquette and Creighton. Uh, anything in particular on uh, that catches your eye in tonight's uh, college action? Yeah, it's definitely a pretty scarce card. Um, you know, one game that I played, uh, which you can hear on my pod, uh, is Mississippi. I laid 21 and a half with the Rebels. I think this is a really good basketball team. I think they're going to be a top four team in the SEC this season. Uh, beat that UNC Wilmington team the other night by 20, held them to 58 points. I think defensively, they're really undervalued. Uh, you know, to beat Ole Miss, I think you're going to have to shoot the ball real well. I'm not sure if Central Arkansas can do that. Central Arkansas will play a kind of top five pace in the country. They want to go up and down, but they are wretched on the defensive end. Mississippi has a good way of just kind of taking, you know, offenses, just kind of punting them. That's what they did to Wilmington. I think they'll do it here. They're deep. They have a guy in the middle, Romello White, and our Arizona State transfer that is really good and kind of can hold down the paint. Uh, I'm pretty high on Ole Miss. I think they make it three in a row here and win by, I don't know, Maybe like 85, 62, something like that. Make sure you're listening to the Big Man on Basketball podcast. Recaps, previews, big picture stuff, and uh, Big Man makes some picks as well. And uh, Jeff, want to ask you about another team now i uh, most folks around here listening probably if they've seen iowa this year it was when the the hawkeyes knocked off north carolina i didn't watch any of that game but i had them on friday night so i watched them against iowa state and man they are a machine on offense that i don't know about their defensive uh deficiencies they they gave up quite a few points but the second half they dominated uh, the other night and seemingly just scoring 90 you know 85 90 100 points every game in that particular game Luca Garza had foul trouble in the first half came uh, in the second half I think ended up scoring 34 points in 17 minutes before we talk about Iowa as a team and their matchup against Gonzaga I saw you tweeting about this earlier today and I had a question about this actually Friday night on Twitter what is Luca Garza at the next level is he lottery is he first round is he a great college player that won't translate to the pros? Uh, you had a a uh, pretty strong take on that today. Well, what's your take on Garza at the next level? Yeah, I, I think to, to to call him a first round pick is laughable. I, look, is he a great college player? Yeah, he is. Uh, he's a dominating player, frankly, uh, but he's a terrible defensive player for the most part. And look, to be honest, clip the, the league's just kind of moving away from his skill set. Yeah. Um, you know, you kind of liken him to, to Mike, like a Mike Dom. If you remember Mike Dom a couple of years ago yeah. in South Dakota State, you know, Mike Dom clip did things in college in his four year career that only Kevin Durant did. Um, he was a, a really just generational type of college player, and you know, he's a guy that that's playing overseas now in in 
in Spain. So, you know, just because you're a good high college player or a high level, you know, college player doesn't mean you're going to get drafted. I think he'd be lucky to be drafted in the second round. Uh, I think a lot of the people that will say he is are just fans and you know, they like their guy. He's a great player. Uh, he seems like a good kid, but um, the truth of the matter is you've got to defend in the NBA and his skill set, he's, he's just a little too slow, I think. Um, he might be able to work his way into a team, maybe get a workout and, and find a way. And, you know, like I said, he could get drafted late in the second round, but um, to say he's a first round talent is moronic. Well, enjoy him uh, while he's at Iowa because he is fun to watch and enjoy him uh, against Gonzaga coming up on Saturday. Number one versus number three. Jeff, I interacted with you a little bit on social media Friday night uh, getting you to throw out some numbers on what you think the line will be, the total will be. It's going to be, uh, should be a, a lot of points scored in that game. I think you like the Sags to win and I believe you You said you like the Sags to roll in that game on uh, on Saturday but I'm looking forward to that one. Should be some fireworks. So what's your take on that uh, headliner coming up? Yeah, I, you know, sometimes with the odds makers, you can only set a game so high uh, and I think you know this total will probably one probably be 170. I think that's kind of where it'll it'll settle settle in at. I have a hard time figuring out where the stops come from here. I I, I think I was main deficiency is defensively. Um, you know they haven't really played anyone. Look, I, I here's what I'm going to say about Iowa. Okay, they're a top ten team because other top ten teams have lost. But I've got to be honest, I, I'm not overly impressed with what they've done. I mean, they've beaten four really bad basketball teams, you know, two of which are, are, are bottom 25 in the country. They beat a North Carolina team that, that's really still figuring things out. They don't have a star. And Iowa State is the worst team in the Big 12. So I'll pick apart what they've done so far. I like Garza. I think they're a really good offense, and they're going to score points because Gonzaga's issue is, you know, if they have one, is defensively. Uh, they're both going to run. These are two top 25 pace teams. They're scoring all over the place. Um, I think this is probably a game very much like an NBA game. I think both teams could get into the 90s. I think this is a fun game. I don't. I, I've tried to kind of pick my brain and figure out where the defensive stops come from. Um, I'm just not sure I see it. I mean, Gadag is number two and always top five in offensive efficiency. I was number one. So I, I don't really see where, where the stops come from. I, Sharps will bet the under, and I, I think they're dead wrong. If I get a total at 172 or lower, I'll bet the over. Jeff Nadeau joining us, big man on campus, big man on basketball. You can download it every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Subscribe to that podcast. Jeff, I'll probably ask you this every Monday when we talk coming off a college basketball weekend as we get further into the season. Is there – a team you really like, whether you're backing them every each one of their games or if you just like watching them. Uh, who's a team off the radar that you've really enjoyed watching so far this season that you're intrigued about heading forward? You really want me to go off the radar, Clip? Go off the radar. So far? Okay. In memory of the great Kobe Bryant. Uh, Bryant. I love Bryant. <laughs> okay. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of this basketball team. Um yeah, for anyone out there that's not familiar with what Jared Gross is doing up in, in Smithfield, Rhode Island, uh, this is a really fun basketball team. Uh, they are up and down. They play the fastest tempo in America. Uh, they're actually really efficient. They shoot the cover off the ball. I mean, you look at in six games this season, this group's shooting at about 41% from three. Uh, they get to the line. They're, they're just really talented and fun offensively. And you know, something to keep in mind, Clip, they're actually a, a team defensively that struggle at times, but... I think going forward, they're going to have some success on the defensive end because they play a zone. Uh, if you know anything about the NEC, it's not a particularly good shooting conference. Most of the teams want to play downhill. They have a kid in the middle uh, called uh, Hal Elysius. He's a really good shot blocker. Uh, he's got a, a top 60 block rate in, in the country. Uh, I really like this team. I, I'm, I've been involved with them. They've covered a lot of games. Uh, they hung around and should have beat Syracuse. Uh, this is a fun basketball team. Uh, I'll go with the Bulldogs and Bryant. We know a little bit about Bryant around here. ECU played them in the Charlottesville Regional in baseball a few years ago. Bryant came in like hitting 400 as a team. They had a million home runs, and then ECU was able to 
to shut them down, beat Virginia, and move on to a super regional. So the folks around Greenville have heard of Bryant. Now we'll have to get to know Bryant basketball. So thanks for that. Uh, yeah, a team, a team to definitely keep your eyes on. All right. They are covering numbers and doing things. Jeff, I uh, know you were talking some NBA on, on the pod today, looking at some futures that kind of – Caught me off guard that the uh, the Hornets were in action on Saturday night. Charlotte was up by like 20 in the first quarter against Toronto. Ended up losing the game. Uh, they play against Toronto again tonight. LaMelo Ball, a few highlights in that game. Hornets are forever in purgatory, Jeff, where they're like 7th, 8th, sneaking to the playoffs. Or if they don't, unfortunately, they're like ninth or 10th. They're never good enough to have a good pick. Got lucky in the lottery this past season and were able to get the number three pick. Where are the the Hornets? I almost feel like they've done enough to get to a potential 7-8 spot, not enough to do anything better than that, and they probably did too much to be a lot worse than that. How about you? Where, where do you think the Hornets are this season? Yeah, I, I think, you know, we, you you kind of hit on it, and I've said on this show before, I mean, you know, the Hornets are just kind of in a tough spot as a franchise. I mean, you know, they're in a small market. You know, they, they have some excitement. And, look, that was one of the reasons I would have taken LaMelo Ball. Uh, LaMelo Ball is going to sell a ton of tickets. It's just that simple. Uh, I'll be real frank to you, Clip. If we could watch basketball, uh, I would come down to Charlotte and watch LaMelo Ball. And I don't. I only say that about Luka Doncic and, um, and, and LeBron James. I, I, I love LaMelo Ball. And people will say, why don't you just go to Philly? Because uh, I just kind of want to see what, what it's like there and what, what the kind of buzz around them is. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think they're going to be pretty interesting. Uh, I don't know if they'll contend for a playoff spot. They might. Uh, you know, but yeah, Gordon Hayward, he's a really good wing player. I think with Lamelo and Terry Rozier and kind of some of the young bigs they have, I'm kind of excited. I like Jalen McDaniels, the kid they got out of Washington. I think he had, you know, sort of lottery aspirations at some point. Uh, Vernon Carey, a solid player as well. So I'm pretty high on the Charlotte Hornets. I'm going to be betting on them to cover a lot of numbers this year. I think they're going to be a sneaky Hawks type of team from last year where yeah, they're going to kind of surprise you a little bit. Jeff, I remember uh, it was before the uh, season even ended last year. might have been when the Rockets lost out of the playoffs in the bubble. You did your, your classic... Uh, Big man, uh, J- James Harden to Philly, please credit uh, deal. And I was like, all right, what's he talking about? And it, it looked like it was going to become a reality, and it still could. What's the deal with Harden right now? What's the deal with the Sixers? Are they? What do they look like this year? And, and where is Harden going to end up playing in the near future? Yeah, I mean, even this morning, uh, their uh, ESPN reported that I, you know, even after getting John Wall, uh, James Harden's still not real interested. Yeah. He's gone. He's going to get traded. As far as him coming here, um, you know, the Sixers are too stupid to do that. Um, that would actually work, but you know, as usual with them, they don't ever want to do anything smart. Uh, they want to keep Ben Simmons, For whatever reason. I don't know, um, but I, you know, I, I think it should happen. And if they were smart, it would happen, but. It doesn't look like they're going to make it happen. As far as them, um, you know, I think there's market improvement, but you know, they still have major issues. Um, I don't think they can play with Simmons and Embiid, and I'll say it to the day I die. And if I'm wrong, then so be it. Uh, they also still don't really have a point guard. If Ben's not going to be the point guard, so um, I don't know. They need they need kind of someone to hit. They need a maxi to work out or or someone like that because you know Danny Green's an aging veteran off the worst season he's had. Seth Curry's still a 25-minute player. That's about it. Matisse Thybul offers very little offensively. And Tobias Harris is the worst contract in this team's history. So uh, there's not a lot to like for me. I speak the truth. Most Sixer fans are delusional and tell you that they can win the title, but they can't, and they won't. And they'll finish fifth like usual. Jeff do joining us. Jeff, uh, finally, before we let you go, Monday Night Football tonight. I like seeing new teams in primetime on my television. Uh, I like seeing Buffalo on Sunday night last night. We'll get a double dose of the Browns here this week and next week. Sunday night football next week. Monday night football tonight. They'll take on the Ravens. The Ravens have had the weirdest schedule in NFL history these past few weeks. They are uh, three-point favorites tonight on the road at Cleveland. And uh, Baltimore looking for the sweep. Cleveland 9-3 and on the year, Jeff. Uh, Any thoughts on this matchup tonight? Uh, yeah, I lean, I lean with Baltimore. I think Cleveland is – I still think they're gimmicky. Uh, defensively, I think they have issues. I think they're going to really struggle against the run tonight. They just can't Cleveland team to get a game where there's no weather issues. I mean, how many weather issues does yeah. this team have 
this season. It's kind of unfair. Look, I'll continue to, to kind of assume Baker Mayfield will just do something to screw this game up. Uh, Ravens starting to get healthy uh, at home here. Um, or sorry, uh, they're not at home right. here. Uh, is, is this in Cleveland? Yeah. yeah. Uh, either way, I think that the Ravens are just better in this spot. I think it, the weather just kind of suits them a little bit more. And I know the, the Browns like to run the ball as well, but Baltimore is starting to get healthy on defense. Uh, I don't like the fact that Ward and, and Ronnie Harrison are out. Uh, they're the best two coverage players they have as far as uh, secondary is concerned. So I, I'm going to lean with uh, the, the healthy Ravens. Jeff Nadeau joining us. We'll talk to him later on in the week uh, as well. And you can download and subscribe to the Big Man on Basketball podcast. Drops every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Big Man also uh, follow him on Twitter at Jeff NADU. Jeff, always appreciate the chat. And uh, we'll check in with you later this week, man. I look forward to it. Thanks, Cliff. All right, thank you. There's the BMOC. Jeff Nadeau joining us on a Monday edition of Pirate Radio Live. We'll take a timeout, wrap up. Hour two, we are on to hour three on Pirate Radio Live when we return. Got Troy D here, got the treasure chest opening up on a Monday. It's all ahead. We're back with you after this. This is Stephen Igo, publisher of HoistTheColors.net. Recruiting is the lifeblood of any college sports program, and no one devotes more coverage to the future of ECU athletics than Hoist the Colors. Want to know who's going to be the next Holt Nailers or Jaden Gardner? We've got all the inside scoop on the Pirates' most talented recruits and top targets 24-7. Sign up now and get your first month of coverage for a single dollar. HoistTheColors.net, the most reliable reporting on ECU athletics. Here with Mike Mullis from Fixed NC. And Mike, you were telling me the other day, people ask you all the time, I didn't know you did that. What does that mean? You know, anything that involves property damage repair, call us first. If it's your crawl space, you've got interior humidity issues, a water loss, your ice maker line breaks, obviously fire and smoke, everybody knows we do those. But anything that involves interior or exterior property damage, we're your repair experts. Mike, how can everybody get in touch with you? 252-999-0001 or FixedNC.com. Ahoy, mateys! To keep those cars clean, you need the Pirate's Cove Fast Pass. The new Pirate's Cove Car Wash and Haviland Express Lube on Glen Burnie Road in Newburn is now open. Pirate's Cove in Newburn is offering Fast Passes for $9.99 for new Fast Pass customers. You can visit us in Greenville on Fire Tower Road, Memorial Drive, and on East 10th Street. And have you heard? Pirate's Cove on Fire Tower Road is now offering interior cleaning. So we have you surrounded. Pirates Cove, the official car wash partner of ECU Athletics. What the heck was that? Oh, that was Chuck from Naughty Dog. They just did a new beer release, and he gets so excited he runs around town screaming and telling everyone. I told him I would cut this new commercial instead and let people know to get to Naughty Dog this holiday season to try their new beers, that they're open seven days a week, and that they're doing a fundraiser to drop off food and toys for dogs. Go to Naughty Dog Brewing Company on Main Street in downtown Winterville today, and maybe you'll see Chuck there screaming. Follow Naughty Dog on Facebook and Instagram for more fun. This is Dr. Anthony Scalic from Orthopedics East and Sports Medicine Center of Greenville. We offer a variety of services including arthroscopic surgery, sports medicine, carpal tunnel surgery, general orthopedics, fracture care, total joint replacement, physical therapy, and on-site MRIs. For experienced and professional medical care, visit our office on WH Smith Boulevard in Greenville and online at orthoeast.com. Orthopedics East, providing services to ECU and Pitt County Athletics for over 35 years. Go Pirates! Great food, great atmosphere, and great service is Atavola Market Cafe. Atavola is simply a restaurant that focuses on that, being a great restaurant. There's something for everyone at Atavola. The menu offers a variety of great choices like pastas, pizzas, sandwiches, soups, salads, and seasonal rotating selections. Lunch or dinner, Atavola is always the right call. Call ahead and get Atavola to go. Or stop by the bar for a drink with friends. It's simple. Come and eat at Atavola Market Cafe, Red Banks Road next to Food Lion, and AtavolaMarket.com. Atavola, pirates supporting pirates. Been pulled over for speeding and written a ticket? Then you need to call O'Neill Speedometer Service in Greenville. O'Neill's can calibrate all vehicles for speeding tickets. All-wheel drives, no problem. 18-wheelers, no problem. Motorcycles, no problem. O'Neill's can also repair instrument gauges that have stopped working. Whether you drive a Ford or GMC, Greenville's trusted speedometer shop for over 30 years is O'Neill's. Call today for repairs or calibration work at 756-5050. O'Neill Speedometer Service. Go Pirates! 
in studio today with Messi, also known as Isaac Callis to his friends and family. Why F3? I come to F3 because it's really fun, it's really challenging, and I get to be challenged and pressured in a good way by me being the only 2.0 kid here going against the grown-ups, seeing what I can do, and I just come to have fun. One letter, one number, F3. Learn more today at F3ENC.com. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Atlantic Wireless, your local authorized U.S. cellular agent. Atlantic Wireless now offers home internet service. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find a store near you. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. University PC Care is proud to support Greenville Fire Rescue this year in their annual Operation Santa Claus Toy Drive. Stop by their Fire Tower Road location over the next two weeks to drop off new unwrapped toys. University PC Care will honor $20 off any service for customers dropping off toys, and they'll donate an additional unwrapped toy for every toy donated. If you have any questions or for iPhone or computer support, call 558-1280 or go online at universitypccare.com. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Clip Rock. Hour three of Pirate Radio Live on a Monday, a big hour on tap as we will open up the treasure chest. For the only time on this Monday and make you a winner. We still have a lot of prizes to get to. We'll double up uh, some more days this week. We will go the rest of this week, next Monday and Tuesday. So a lot of opportunities for you to win. One of those opportunities will be in this hour. Troy D is also here on a Monday. Hello, Troy. Good to see you, Cliff. How are you? Doing great. Victory Monday. We both have our victorious lids on. Yeah, it doesn't happen often. So. It does not. <laughs> Figured. Uh, we're running out of out of days to have it happen, so I figure I'd break out the Chicago Bears hat today. We got the losers in Studio B, Shirley's Dolphins. Oh, that's messed up. And Ch- although Shirley, you played the Chiefs, and so you can't really yeah, we played them much. tough though. Yeah, night made a nice comeback. It, it was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. You know what I, uh, I feel bad about because I've I've been wearing this hat all season long for Victory Monday for the Bears. I watched. Uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation over mm-hmm. the weekend with the boys. I've probably seen it like 75 times. Mm-hmm. It never gets old. But so anyway, we watched it. They watched it again. And, you know, Clark Griswold is from Chicago. Mm-hmm. Big Chicago Bears guy. Always in all of the... There's like four different National Lampoon Vacation movies. You've got Vegas Vacation. This would, this would be a good trivia question, Clip. Can you name them? So what are you saying? All the National Lampoon yeah, movies? He wears because there's like type, a million of them. Well, the those. ones that Chevy Chase is in. He wears Chicago Bear. The ones the Griswold, Griswolds are in. There's okay. Vegas Vacation, European. Christmas Vacation, European Vacation, and the uh, regular, <coughs> the first one, Vacation, where they went to Wally World. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's always in some type of Chicago Bears gear. Mm-hmm. The hat he wears during Christmas Vacation, I had that identical hat growing up as a kid. And when my parents, you know how... I think I told you a couple years ago, my parents were moving out of their house in North Raleigh, mm-hmm. so I had to like clean out stuff. And I think as a kid, I was like, "Oh, well, this hat's too old. I'm not gonna. I can't keep everything." I don't think I kept it. Now it's like cool. Now it's like retro. Right. Now it's vintage, and I'm like, "Why did I get rid of that hat?" Is the identical hat Clark Griswold wears in Christmas Vacation? Man, it just brought back a lot of childhood memories. I, well. And my, that was my Bears hat. I have a lot of fitted hats, and I've gotten rid of so many of those over the years. Do I you couldn't wear them? well. I couldn't wear them anymore. Oh, you outgrew them. But I could maybe display them right. somewhere. Yeah, but, sure. Yeah. Have your mom make them into a quilt. Oh, that's Perhaps. t-shirts. I, I don't know. I don't know. It could work. <laughs> you haven't seen that with the old shirts? Sure. The, you know the moms yeah. make it into a quilt. Yeah. Yeah. All right. A Sorry, trip down memory it. lane yeah, with Troy what. D and his Bears hat. Yeah. This is not the only time we've taught hats on the show today. Talked about it with Steve Rockerford earlier in the he's show. He's a hat guy. So he a lot of a, a lot of hat talk. He's a flat brim hat guy. He is. He's a fitted not guy. Not every guy his age can pull that off. Yeah. He can. He's my hero. I can't do that, man. I'm not a flat brim guy. Yeah. You can kind of do both. You operate in both worlds. Sure. But uh I can't do it. I look like uh I'm dressing up like Tony Hawk. 
<laughs> when, as an old guy <laughs> when I do it. All right, Tony. You've seen, you've seen me in a flat brim hat, and you're like, you can't do that. It does, like, that fits Even you my well. kids tell me, like, that fits you a lot better. Yeah. Everybody's got their their thing. Yeah. That's your How thing. did these become named, like, dad hats? Well, They're just regular hats to me. You're a dad, aren't I, you? I am. Exactly. I, I just consider it a normal I'm, hat. I'm not a dad. Yeah, and I, isn't a dad I, hat. I, I have always worn my, my brims curved. Yeah. You've always like, been a dad, Shirley. <laughs> 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 Who's your daddy? Shirley is. Now, when I used to play baseball, I would curve my brim almost to a circle. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, it's like, out the yeah. sun. It's like... It goes in its phase, phases, phases, yeah. phases in life. Yeah. Anyway, sorry I got off on a tangent. That's what Let's happens? Clip. Take a time out, Charlie. We'll come back. We got ECU, uh, ECU football note to talk about. Jake Verity will no longer be kicking for the Pirates, and uh, some Joe Dooley comments to talk about as well as the Pirates get set to take on SMU on Wednesday. That and more on the way on Pirate Radio Live after this. Jim Gray from Westwood One here with a Monday Night Football Preview, sponsored by Prilosec. Treat your frequent heartburn with Prilosec OTC. We wrap up Week 14 with AFC North action when the Browns host the Ravens. Baltimore broke a three-game losing streak last week with the return of Lamar Jackson and a win over Dallas. But now they face a very hot 9-3 Cleveland team. Baker Mayfield threw for four touchdown passes in the first half of their 41-35 win over the Titans. Back in the spring, our foundation that we laid about our goals, uh, we're all on the same page. So when you get a group that's hungry and works for the same things, uh, that's when it really gets special. So it's all about us right now, and that needs to be our focus. Kevin Harlan and Hall of Famer Kurt Warner will call all the action when the Browns host the Ravens on Monday Night Football. Remember to listen to Westwood One's coverage of the NFL all season long. Right here on Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Hey, frequent heartburn may keep you from running your A-game, but it doesn't have to anymore. Join the Prilosec OTC two-week challenge. Just go to PrilosecOTC.com. You'll get $3 off to get you started, plus 14 days of tips, tricks, and reminders. Just two weeks, zero heartburn. Go to PrilosecOTC.com and sign up today. Zero heartburn is possible with Prilosec OTC. Use as directed for 14 days to treat frequent heartburn, not for immediate relief. Get in the zone, AutoZone. Welcome to AutoZone. What are you working on today? Taking on that next oil change yourself is a great idea. We can help you get started. Right now, you can get five quarts of Castrol Edge full synthetic motor oil and an STP extended life oil filter for just $31.99. You can even get it all fast your way with our next day delivery or free same day store pickup. Getting the job done just got easier. Restrictions and details at AutoZone.com. Get in the zone, AutoZone. North Carolina State Parks are now open for visitors. Parks should be used for exercise, fresh air, getting out in nature, or a day trip as the state safely reopens. Visitors should enjoy themselves, but please remember the three W's. Wear face coverings, wait six feet apart, and wash your hands often. Focus on moving through the park, keep social distancing in mind, and avoid large groups. While most facilities and activities will be open, please contact any state park before your visit with questions or visit ncparks.gov for slash open. Enjoy the warm air, circulating moments after you turn up the heat. Precise control of cooking temperatures. Enough hot water on demand for everyone's shower. The instant glow of warmth when you turn on your fireplace or fire pit. Never having to change a gas tank on your outdoor grill. Experience the affordable luxury of natural gas. Find out more at GUC.com. With rates being historically low, now is the best time to buy or refinance your home. This is Talbot Green with Angel Oak Home Loans. Now is the time to take advantage of the opportunity to buy more home or refinance your current mortgage. The combination of our local team's experience and Angel Oak's wide offerings of products from standard conventional, government, and portfolio loans has something for most financial situations. For more information, call Talbot Green, Joanne Weir, or Wanda Hager at 751-2060. In MLS, 1719-250 and 685 Equal housing lender. Hidden phone trade-ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. 
You won't find any of those at US Cellular because we do things differently. And that means you can get the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE or Google Pixel 5 for free with no hidden requirements all season long. US Cellular. Upgrade to fair. Terms and conditions apply. See store uscellular.com for details. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for US Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. This is Coach Donnie Kirkpatrick, office coordinator for ECU football, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Atlantic Wireless, your local authorized U.S. cellular agent. Atlantic Wireless now offers home internet service. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find a store near you. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Take a look at your stock market report for today. The Dow was down 184 points. It closed at 29,861. The NASDAQ is up 62 at 12,440. And the S&P is down 15 at 3647. That's your Wells Fargo Advisors financial report. For a personal look into investing, call Wells Fargo Advisors today at 756-6900 in Greenville. Wells Fargo Advisors, LLC, member SIPC. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Clip Rock. All righty, Hour 3, Pirate Radio Live on a Monday. Clip Rock here, Troy D. inside the Pirate Radio Studios. We've had a, um, I guess, a running segment on our program, Shirley, today. I mentioned in Hour 1 that uh went to update the computer at 2.30 p.m., and at 3.30, I, I now, said now this. you chose to update. It said, do you want to update? And yeah. Said, yes. Well, it was going slow. Yeah. So I was like, well, I can't really update. use right. it anyway. Yeah. So at, at 3.30, I said, what time will this update? Will it be done before 6 o'clock? And if so, what time will it be? I would have thought like 20 minutes max. Yeah. I heard you say that. Well, Shirley said 5.23. I said 5.13. Chandler said 4.47. Uh, Redbeard on Twitter said 4.15. We also had a couple people now, on Facebook Live guess. 4.15 a.m., he might be right. That is correct. He did not, is, not specify. I don't know what the hell you're updating, but it might be the entire universe. So everybody is going to end up being wrong here because this thing is not going to be done by 6 o'clock. Mike said 4.19. Uh, Josh said 4.35. Sorry, folks. Uh, you are going to be wrong. This thing is taking forever. So, Troy... <laughs> Uh, I will not be able to read comments as we yeah. go on my it computer. It does say set. it says don't turn off your PC. Uh, this will take a while. Yeah, and you're only at twenty seven percent. Yes, again, yeah. started at two thirty. We're going on almost three hours. What have here. you been doing to this computer? Uh, reading Facebook, <laughs> and that's about it. I uh, got a couple Facebook comments. Uh, we were talking about the Bears, you know, retro stuff that's in National Lampoon Christmas Vacation, that original hat that I owned. Uh, Robert Matthews said the Dicka sweater. I don't think he wore it, but I did. my dad has that original Dicka sweater. Wore it to the Super Bowl when the 85 Bears were in it in January of 1986. Okay. But I'm saying, I, wonder, I bet he still has it. Yeah. I wonder if I could go Oh, he, he didn't get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, that would be a cool keepsake. Uh, Mike says, I got an old mesh Walter Payton jersey I, will, I never threw away. That's kind of cool. One of the old school mesh. Remember the tearaway jerseys yeah. they used to have? Uh, John, we were talking about hats. Are you are you flat brim hat or are you curved guy hat? John Newton says he's team flat brim. Newton, welcome to the team. Go. And he, I guess you can go both ways on that, right? Sure. You could be a flat brim hat and a curved guy hat. Wait a minute, Troy. Something just happened. Well, it says it will. Your computer will turn on and off multiple times. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I thought we had an update here. Yeah, uh, I think it, this is part of the update process, and then it'll start spinning again. The computer has restarted. So, folks yeah. who are tuned into the show for this, I'll it's keep like you updated sequence. on what's going on. We haven't hit takeoff yet. It's okay. just part of the countdown. All right. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I have uh, – I own more fitted – I like the fitted hats, but I do have some dad hats as well. Yeah. So, I'll go either way. Um, you know. Whatever. I like the new look, by the way. <laughs> the, uh, the Fred – I, uh, I call it the Limp Biscuit look. Well, I called it that. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, I missed that. I thought you called it the Fred Durst look. So you wait, hold on. So you're calling it the Limp Biscuit look? Well, just because more people would be familiar with that song than maybe the lead singer. <laughs> okay. But you do look like the lead singer. We'll call it the Limp Biscuit. In your look. picture, the way you took the photo, I don't know with the angle and the light, you kind of looked like the guy. Yeah, that was the point. Yeah, I'm glad I 
I much did more that. so than in person. But to I, the do, I do like the new look. Thank For you. For those Thank that you. can't see, yeah. Clip is sporting the chin beard. Okay, chin beard. I don't know how you're going to describe it. Chin beard. Yeah. yeah. How would you describe it? Well, I mean, I described it a different way on Twitter. Which was? Well, we'll save it for Twitter. All right, okay. So, yeah, we'll see if it's okay to, to say. All right. Got but, uh, yeah, just so I was shaving my beard and was like, let's do something dumb here. And uh, I like it. I went for Fred Durst. This was all kinda, the rage in the early 2000s. It kind of looks very sporty, actually. Late 90s, early 2000s. Chipper Jones used to go with this. Yeah. Um, Kevin Garnett had chin hair. so I like it. Chin hair used to be a thing that people did back in the day. And everything that's old is new again. <laughs> so why Trust not? Me, it comes full circle. I need a, you're leading the charge, and that'll probably be the hot thing in 2021. I need a Ditka sweater and a... Uh, <laughs> of course, you got to go mustache if you go Ditka sweater. Yeah, well, I, you know, it's a new day. Flat brim, Ditka sweater, chin beard. I just hope the Bears... Could the Bears get hot enough to get a wild card playoff and then... Mm. Negative. Somehow match up negative. You know the answer to that. Team. You know the answer. That would be a great matchup, wouldn't it? No, it would be an awful game. Nobody would watch that except <laughs> oh, me and you. We would watch it. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Yeah. That'd be fun. I'd have to watch that with you. Washington is in a fantastic spot, Troy D. Is they are now a game ahead of the Giants. Oh yeah, and uh, three games left to go. It pays to be in a bad division. It does. I'm not yeah. going to sit here and say we're a good team. We're well, lucky to be cares? in the division we're in. If you win the division, it doesn't matter how you got there. And uh, host a playoff game and see what happens from there. Absolutely. So, I'm excited. Excitement time uh, about that. We got NFL tonight. Browns. Excitement and, time. Thank you, Coach. Browns and Ravens. Uh, Troy ECU football news. A little surprising. Jake yeah. Verity deciding he will not be returning to ECU. I'd heard rumors about this from uh, the football staff. Um, some folks involved in football last week, and uh, I wasn't sure whether it was going to happen or not. But uh, yeah, announcing he's leaving ECU to try and pursue a pro career. But uh, what a great, you know, what a great asset he was to this program. All-time leading scorer. Yeah. It's, it, it's, you and know. for many games, Troy he was our post-game player of the game. Yeah, unfortunately, this is true. And you know, and I, uh, actually, I talked to Coach Houston about. It might have been last week on the show. And he, mm-hmm. he likes the guy that's behind him. Um, he feels very confident about him. But it would have been, hey, if Jake came back, that would have been a solid, you know, get one of those bonus years back. But you can't fault the guy for yeah. wanting to move on. Absolutely, so. we wish him uh, the, the best of luck. And those are tough jobs because there's all you know at least on a lot of the, if you're a wide receiver, there's multiple wide receivers on a team. There's multiple running backs. Multiple linebackers. You only have one kicker. Yep. They don't run too deep. Usually, if they lose one, they go sign one somewhere else. But you only carry one on the roster. So there's only 32 of those jobs in the world. That's a tough gig. And man, they they flip flop. They recycle them in and out yes. a lot too. So there's no just because you know he wants to be in it doesn't mean he will be. But we wish him all the best, and I hope he will. If he can get a, a spot and kick in a few games, he might be good for like four or five years because you see the same names yeah. recycled over and over. Again. And, and I mean, you think about it, even how tough it is to be an NFL quarterback. But they run three, four quarterbacks deep on the roster. You know what do you think the toughest position is in the NFL to make it? I, I would dare say possibly a place kicker. Well, due to the numbers, yeah. punter, kicker, I yeah. guess, because everybody else has more than uh, – and long snapper, Chandler. Sorry. There's only one long snapper. You don't you don't bring in two long snappers. Yeah, okay, Chandler, long snapper. And then as soon as you have a bad snap, you're your right. job is Everyone. done. That's right. As soon as we know your name, you're gone. That's right. If you, you are better off not having a name or number, just be out there snapping. Yeah. I think most jobs should be like that. You screw up, you're gone. One time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and coaches, ADs, administrators, you mess up, you're gone. There's does that deal. include us? Well, you know, there's exemptions to everything. Okay, everyone. good. Because this would be <laughs> yeah. dead air right now. <laughs> Nobody in the building. We had one-day contracts, we'd all be screwed. That, yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. All right, uh, Pirate Hoops, Troy D, 5-0. 5-0. Oh. And, and, and Joe Dooley is the most... Is the angriest five and zero coach in the country. <laughs> he, I love his passion. Five and zero, he could not be more miserable. He is pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard him more mad. It's uh, it's hilarious. We were joking about that. You know, SMU is going to be a, a favorite. They're a really good team. Like even if you pull the upset, we were talking earlier yeah. today. Like, yeah, guys, uh, we won tonight. Uh, terrible defensive performance by us. <laughs> like he, that's just how he is. I know. Though. That's just I, what I, he, I like his thing. Though. Yeah, always striving to be better. All right, uh, let's hear a little bit of Joe Dooley earlier today as he spoke with the media as uh, the Pirates will take on SMU coming up Wednesday. Here were his opening comments. Uh, we're able to get the guys a day off 
uh, yesterday after a, you know a couple of days of practice after the North Florida game. Uh, SMU, terrific opponent, probably the best offensive team in the league. Uh, very balanced, and uh, you know our guys are going to have to be uh, ramped up and ready to go when we go to Dallas on Wednesday. Great thing about this Pirate team, a lot of guys returning from last year, and uh, Coach Dooley was asked how much it helps them to have a roster that knows what to expect from conference play. Well, I've seen it. I mean, I, I think when you tell guys – you know what to expect sometimes they don't necessarily believe what um what you're telling them because they haven't seen it now that they've seen it for a year i think there is a familiarity uh you know we were going through the edit clips on smu this morning with these guys and uh, you know they were calling some of the plays from last year's games and you know saying you know you don't realize how fast somebody is until you've played against them so i do think there's much better familiarity and i think the guys have a better feel and uh hopefully that'll translate to 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 playing better all right, Troy, we have a question about if Joe Dooley's happy. Let's hear it. Uh, is it, like, happy on the inside or on the outside? <laughs> Here in year three, Coach, are you happy with where your program is? All right, where the program is. Let's see what he says. Like everybody else, it's been a uh, – this year has been a different because you, I don't think we have, truly have a feel of where we are yet because we haven't played enough games. You know, I, I, I did the – you know, we sat around before, and it's no one's fault. You're just sitting there saying, you know, we probably would have played – Anywhere between you know between scrimmages and everything else, you would have played you know nine more games uh, during this period. Now, uh, I do think that you know the schedule was set up pretty good uh, as far as coming in you know to play some good competition out of conference. Uh, you know, but it's it's uh, I, I do think with you know we had eleven new guys last year. I feel a lot better this year than I did at, at this point last year. All right, feels better this year than he did a year ago. Yeah, it's improvement. That's uh, the That's most a, excited you ever hear. That, he sounds extremely happy to me right there. And and you know for really, I mean, he is got to be really happy with how his guys have played so far this season. Knows that they can get a lot better, but we don't have a lot of undefeated non-conference seasons, Troy D. And uh, to see what they've done so far, it's like they finally are doing what they're supposed to do. And yeah. and Cy Seymour said that ECU is supposed to beat. You know, like Wilmington, yes, uh, Charlotte. Like right. I know they've had better programs than us, but right. we got to get to where we're just beating them every year. Correct. You know? And and I, you know, there's a little bit of buzz about ECU basketball right now in the community, which there hasn't been in some time, and people are talking about ECU. But it's a shame that with this pandemic situation yeah. that fans can't go because I do think and I'm not going to say it was there would be sellouts right now, but I do think there would be good sized crowds in Minji's for the games coming up. Uh, and this is always a weird time during the holiday season, but if they could, you know, keep the winning going through December or at least stay competitive, I, I think come January there would have been some great crowds in Minji's. Definitely, and that home court advantage is a big deal. And unfortunately, that is just going to be lost this season. Yeah, that is the the downside of it. You want to to get behind these guys and and be in there. And I miss you know yelling at refs from section two thirteen and yeah. just something I I can do it at home, but it's not the same. They can't hear yeah. me. And they can't hear me when I'm in Minji's. What's but your I, go-to phrase? Like when they make a terrible call, do you have something like you go to? Like probably that's terrible mm-hmm. or that's awful. Um, just that, nothing yeah. vulgar. I'll have to go back to Foot Locker, that type of nah, stuff. Yeah, it's uh, you that, gotta like, be kidding me. Yeah, I'll probably do that a little yeah. bit. You don't drop a you suck. I, I usually don't get that vulgar yeah. in the stands. Yeah. I'm with my dad. The kids don't use that, by the way. That's just yeah. that's a professional sporting term that should not be used at school. I'm in the senior citizen section. I'm with my dad. There's like these super old people in front of us, beside mm-hmm. us. So I try to keep it a little classy. Yeah, up there. That's nice clip. So when I scream at po- the officials, that's a positive clip up there. Yeah, and usually I keep it positive, but. Yeah. After like three or four bad calls, I will let yeah. one rip. That's fair. You know. Yeah. So there you go. I haven't used the Foot Locker reference in a while. Are there still Foot Lockers? I guess there are. Yeah. Foot Locker is, there's one in the mall here. Yeah. Green. Okay. And I, I do believe a... when I walked by, they still wear the official the, the uniform of a referee. Yeah. That's their yeah. identifier, basically. Well, I guess if you are a referee, you could get a side hustle <laughs> at Foot Locker and do a two for one, you know. That could be like your side job. If you were a ref, would you walk in and just start taking gear and walk out? <laughs> that would be morally I mean, it's irresponsible. Kind of, it's kind of their thing. There's a lids at the mall now, right? I haven't been to the oh, mall really? in forever. I've been told by several people that there's a lids in the mall. 
I used to only see those in airports. I've been in one like in Raleigh and Durham at those malls. I saw one like in Charlotte or, yeah. or somewhere. I love a lids. I that can, is the clip Brock yeah, seven. Right I can get there. lost in the lids. Your favorite store? Probably so, yeah. Yeah. Also it looks like uh, your closet. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Except they're a lot prettier. Except they're neater. Yeah, they're like shining in the yeah, store. Yeah, no, I haven't seen that. But they're usually the lids places. They're like expensive, aren't they there? Same online. Oh, they are? Same prices, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah pretty much all right uh troy the pirates are getting on a jet plane yeah not flying private this year not chartering they're going to be flying commercial we all know the financial problems the university is facing and i got to imagine a lot of teams across the country are going commercial this year yeah and commercial is not as bad as it used to be because there's so few people flying the airport's not as crowded the planes might not be as crowded you just hope our seven footers have enough leg room right yeah i mean i but the other plane even if it's a uh charter they still kind of fly regular planes right yeah i would guess so uh cut six shirley is uh joe dooley's thoughts on hitting the road and uh playing an opponent getting on a plane for the first time well, we're going we're about flying tomorrow. so we're going to go out tomorrow uh one of the you know we're, we're going to fly out tomorrow we'll play wednesday and we don't get back to a little bit later on thursday uh so we'll have to you know obviously play saturday we'll have a little uh, planning. We'll probably have to get back here. Get late, back here late in the afternoon. We'll uh, we'll probably meet and, and walk through some stuff regarding James Madison. Sort of tie up the SMU game. Uh, practice Friday for um, for uh, for James Madison and a little bit of Friday, uh, Thursday and Friday for James Madison. So, uh, but we'll we'll head out. We're going to practice here tomorrow morning, then drive over to Raleigh. And I don't know what to expect traveling in the pandemic. So we're just going to line up, put our masks on, and roll. Line up, put the mask on, and roll. So, uh, hey, look, Mike sounds, Houston could use that. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah, line up, mask on, roll. Well, and I mean, have you? I haven't flown since the pandemic started. So, I have I mean, not. I, I have stayed at a hotel, which is a little bit different, but not drastically different, but not as laid back as it used to be. Hmm. But I, I mean, not, I've not flown since the. Do pandemic. you feel like? Did you feel clean? Were you like worried I, at I all? I was not worried at yeah. all. No. Yeah. I no mean, every, more, I, I, I'm not worried. No, no more at a hotel than you are doing right. everyday life. Well, you're a germ guy anyway. You probably don't love to be in a hotel. Like, I was the guy that would, like, it, when it comes to punch the numbers in the elevator, I'll use my knuckle so my hand doesn't touch it. How many know? towels did you use in the hotel room? <laughs> you, you, I, every you know, last one of them. I'm a two-towel guy. You know that from before. And at a hotel, you're at every... You re- get a, di- a get different one every one. time i'll use it and then after i use it i'm done with it because yeah, right. usually they'll replace it yeah. but sometimes now during this covid pandemic situation the housekeeping is not as it was in fact clip they did not offer housekeeping as the hotel i was at uh only before your stay and after your stay but not during the stay hmm. that's one of the new things at least i was at an embassy suites and they they did not they would bring you new towels if you needed them, but they did not offer housekeeping services. So I did, I would try to be a little more conscientious oh, of wow. that situation. I can't believe you got that word. And, um, and possibly even had a, re, I hate to say this, even reuse, how dare I reuse a ho- hotel towel? Without your towel heater yes. with you. Well, sometimes you got to rough it. Tough when, you're, times. when you're on the road, you got to adapt and overcome. And that's what I am. Times I'm is a, tough. Sometimes you just got to be a soldier and do things. Well done. All right. Sorry we got back on the towel talk. Sorry. All do right. you want to, uh, I'll leave it up to Shirley. Shirley, do you want to hear Bo Bats, what he said about a towel? Uh, after our uh, conversation, breaking news by the way, you're up to 86 86 percent. Shirley, you're good. This could happen within the hour, folks. If so it don't does, go anywhere. Shirley's our winner. If it does, yes. Uh, do you want to hear what Bo had to say? He had some, <sighs> this his, was a week ago when we had the towel talk. This was, yeah, on yeah. Thursday. Okay, here is Bo. <laughs> Here's Bo's, uh, what he does with it. Okay, towel. all right, use both sides of the towel one side for your front, the other side for your butt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I said that was a good strategy. Hmm. Like good, like a front side and a back side of the towel. Yeah, and then you use those for your one for your face, one for your back. Go home and put an F and a B on every yeah. towel you have. Front and back. There's a front. There's a back. Or as he said, butt. front and butt. Butt. <laughs> so there you go. That's a you know that's an interesting. That way you're not using the reusing the towel. And I do you, that too. If I re- if you use the towel on your backside, you're not putting it on your face. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's horrible. I yeah. never thought about Even that. Even if you're clean, like yeah. still. It's a great idea. 
Could I tell my George Kuntz towel story, or that's probably too edgy for this? I, you know, now that I think about it, I think I use the <laughs> only if you can do the approach. mannerisms. What's right, yeah, I think I. I, I mean, now too. now that I think about it, like I actually had to visualize it, but I I use the bow bats approach. Yeah, yeah, the bow butts <laughs> approach. <laughs> um, George Coons told me a great uh, locker room story one yeah. time. But is it? Can I? I guess I can kind of water it down. It's not dirty. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's no, we were. I don't know off. what I, we were. You know, Coons, former East for folks that might be newer <coughs> to the program or Greenville. Google them up. Yeah, uh, former ECU. All star linebacker. Google him up. Uh, Long time Green, Green Bay Packer, Super Bowl champion. Great guy. And uh, he told me they were in the locker. I forget the guy's name. I'll have to go text him and find out. He said there was I say a, it was Brett Favre for the no, case. It wasn't story. Brett Favre. No, it was not. But it was one of the, it was the guy, if I said he'd be like, oh, yeah, I know that guy. Um, but he said he'd be in the locker room, like in the middle of the locker room, and he'd take a towel and he'd take it front to back in between his legs like it was dental floss the floss <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh they, my. they were like make sure nobody touched that towel again <laughs> he said he would just do the dental floss with the locker room towel and you wanted to make sure you never got that towel yeah like after. even after it had been clean i don't yeah. know if i want that towel. you got it you got to put a mark on that towel somehow say like, ooh, that's like that makes me not want to floss ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, does, does the trainer just kind of burn that one and not man, put it back that, into rotation? That'd, that'd be tough right there. To just to, imagine after a game. I don't know how much bleach you have, but you'd have to use a lot. They used to be in the division with That's, the Bucks before there was north and south. So, like, yeah. you're playing a 90-degree game in Tampa, and that dude's flossing it <laughs> yeah. out after the game. Yeah, so use your imagination with oh, what man. that towel looks and smells like. All right, two shows in a row, Troy, where we've gotten on this towel thing. This right, will be This our, was your fault. You brought up the towels, not me this time. Actually, Chandler right, did. I go, did extend it a little bit. All right, so just, this is not on you. All right, it's you, not on you. We just you just pitched it and I just kept running. Now what we do, Troy, is reward the listeners for hanging around for that towel let's conversation. Do it. Shirley, let's open it up. <clears throat> the Pirate Radio Treasure Chest is open up once again 317-1250 Shirley what caller are we looking for let's go with our traditional number 12 caller number 12 is a winner you must be 21 or older and you must uh, have not won out of the treasure chest this year if you are eligible uh, with those two things then call in 317-1250 we will run down the prizes when we return and also uh, we will have our winner when we get back on Pirate Radio Live here on a Monday, 317-1250, caller 12 wins. We're back after this. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Tom Brown from Brown and Wood Cadillac. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. Merry Christmas from the Brown and Wood family. They have amazing deals going on in December, like the Cadillac Escalade has savings over $17,000 off. And as always, Brown and Wood is the home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the convention center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. Your CBD store in Greenville has the highest quality CBD products in the country. Your CBD store is the first and only brand that carries USDA certified organic products such as gummies, honey sticks, and high absorption water soluble liquids which are all made in the United States. They even offer products for your pet. The educated staff will help you answer any questions and you can stop in anytime to get a free sample. Your CBD store locally owned and operated open Monday through Saturday 10 to 6 right beside Duck Donuts in Greenville. This is Martin Truex Jr., and as a NASCAR Cup Series champion, I love one-stop shopping. When I need fresh tires or fuel during a race, my pit crew takes care of everything. Off the track, I have an auto owner's independent agent. They handle all my insurance in one place. Car, home, life, and business. Get your own pit crew and find a local agency with auto owner's insurance. This is Norm Bryant with Town Insurance in Greenville. Call me today at 756-8300. Go Pirates! 
UBE and PirateWare.com have everything to fill Santa's sleigh this Christmas. Officially licensed DCU gifts and apparel, polos, outerwear, and sweats from Champion Columbia and Cutter and Buck. Visit the Crow's Nest for the largest selection of ECU children's apparel in the world. Be sure to follow UBE, PirateWare.com on all social media platforms to stay informed on sales, events, and giveaways. UBE and PirateWare.com, making your Christmas jolly and bright for over 50 years. In studio with Dr. Shondell Jones today from Kinetic Physical Therapy. Dr. Jones, you guys offer more than physical therapy. Oh, yes, absolutely. We have more than therapy services. And, uh, you know, we have a lot, but a lot of people don't know that we offer personal training and even health coaching services. We have personal trainers that will actually come right to your home, do a personalized workout plan with you. And our health coaches will help you meet goals and solve problems for those health challenges you wanted to solve but just haven't had a chance to get to yet. Hey, to learn about our packages and deals, you can go right to our website at kptonline.com. For the latest from the world of golf, tune in every Saturday morning from 8 to 10 for the Golf Shop Radio Show, presented by GolfNickers.com, the world's leader in traditional golf apparel. Hosts Mark Greenhelch and Matt Blanchard talk golf from tee to green and everything in between. If you like golf, you're going to love Golf Shop Radio. Before you tee up, drop on in. Welcome to the Golf Shop. Warren's Hot Dog Pizza, homemade lemonade. Hey, Pirate Nation, Warren's Hot Dog's two locations are open for business in Greenville and Chocowinity. Both locations have drive through windows, so stop by today for hot dogs, pizzas, subs, apple and peach turnovers, homemade lemonade, and breakfast in Chocowinity, featuring homemade cheese, ham, and chicken biscuits, plus sausage dogs and more. Warren's in Greenville across from Ron Ayers Motorsports and in Chocowinity next to the fire department. Warren's Hot Dogs, one Get some, get some. White Claw Hard Seltzer. Discover a new wave of refreshment. Crafted using seltzer water, 5% alcohol, and a hint of fruit. Available in five fruit flavors, two grams of carbs, gluten-free, and 100 calories. Find it at whiteclaw.com. White Claw Hard Seltzer. Nothing tastes quite like it. Please drink responsibly. Hard seltzer with natural flavors. White Claw Seltzer Works, 2019 Chicago. Visit whiteclaw.com for full nutritional information. Pirate Radio. And I can promise you, there will be no quarter, ever, from ECU football. Go Pirates. The voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Atlantic Wireless, your local authorized U.S. cellular agent. Atlantic Wireless now offers home internet service. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find a store near you. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Atlantic Wireless is your local authorized U.S. cellular agent and now offers curbside service and free home delivery. In addition to phone service, uh, Atlantic Wireless has a great selection of tablets and now offers home internet service. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find a store near you. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Cliff Rock. All right, thank you, Shirley Rhodes. Welcome back to Pirate Radio Live. We open up the treasure chest. We have a winner on the line. We will get to him in just a moment, Troy D. Yeah, I just want to remind folks, if you are looking to confidentially buy or sell a business here in Eastern North Carolina, then Tony Corey with Trans World Business Advisors is the guy to call. 347-9606. Or you can check them out online, transworldeast.com, to learn more about businesses for sale right here in East North Carolina. Did you know you can buy a business with only 10% of the sales price and even use your retirement funds to do so without penalty? Uh, if you want to buy a franchise where operational systems are already in place, they have over 400 different franchises that you can choose from. Also, they have 150,000 pre-qualified buyers in their database alone. Trans World Business Advisors can confidentially help you sell your business at top dollar. If you're ready to be your own boss and to run your own company, or if you're ready to sell out and let someone else be the boss, call Tony Corey with Trans World Business Advisors, 347-9606. He's local, and he and his team of professionals is ready to help you in Eastern North Carolina. Thanks to Tony Corey with Trans World East. All right, Troy D., uh, we... Open up the treasure chest a moment ago, and uh, Troy, when we used to open up the I treasure know, chest... I know. I meant to bring this in earlier. When we open it up, we used to do this. An old relic has yeah. been found. Shirley, open the chest so we can do it full 
full audio wise. Here we go. Troy loves it. Yeah. Hey, messed it up. Hold on. Wait, it doesn't sound as loud. What happened? <laughs> the spell's broken. All the- no, it's what you're using to bang on it. Remember, we had a gavel. No, well, this is what I used, though, in the room next to you, and it was plenty loud. All right, it's, it's loud enough. It's plenty loud. Yeah, oh, we're right, good. Right. I didn't think it was loud enough. I All thought right. we threw that damn thing <laughs> no, away. No, this is what are you talking about? This is a pirate, part of pirate radio history, Shirley. Yeah, it's also this. part of the reason why my ears are ringing every damn day, too. <laughs> we will never throw away the bell. This came with the station. I liked it a lot more when I was over there <laughs> than right here. So anyway, yeah, so I still have the bell, and we'll bring it out for special moments like this. The bell is back. All right, let's find out who is on the line, our winner. Caller 11 was Chad Moore, who is angry right now, uh, who could not get in. Caller 12 is Chris Hill, who did get in and is our winner. Hello, Chris. Hey, Cliff. How are you? Doing great, man. Congratulations on your victory. Uh, Have you won in the past inside the treasure chest? I have never won this. I've been caller 1 and 2 and 9, and I think I've hit every number (laughs) that you got. It's timer. He had there we go. One. Ring the bell. <laughs> the says when, you, when the bell rings, angels giving out wings. There you go, Chris. Chris uh, Hill. Ring out the bell, boy. Don't, don't give up on your dreams, right, Chris? It's taken 18 years, That's but right, you finally right. have done it. Wow. That's right. That's right. What a 20, story. 28 all bad. That's right. <laughs> it going out on a good note, baby. That's right. That's right. So, Chris, uh, I'll ask the Troy D question. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? I'm a uh, school teacher at Elmhurst Elementary there beside Dowdy Ficklin. Uh, been there for four years now. Right. What do you uh, teach? Grew up in Greenville. I used to sell sell drinks. I used to sell Pepsi's in the Dowdy Ficklin. Well, it was Ficklin Stadium when it looked like an old high school stadium. Um, grew up in Greenville. Like I said, um, I was ball boy for the basketball team when David Robinson played for Navy. Hmm. Um, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've been a pirate my whole life so well chris i I think i know the answer but for listeners that don't what do you uh teach at elmhurst pe pe i used to teach science but uh i've I've taught pe for 20 some years so that's uh i'm a lot more comfortable in the gym it's a heck of a resume there yeah good stuff yeah all right uh trust the pe (laughs) there you go man that's the new we don't call it dodgeball (laughs) shirley uh you want to run down the prizes we have left I got cut out of this? Yeah. Hold on you don't have a second. sheet. Oh, I know. Well, I was just going to share yours, but that's okay. All right. I don't want to leave Troy out. No, I'll let y'all do no, it. Go you, ahead. No, no, no. Go I'll, ahead, I'll announce the winner. No, you guys no. do this. I'll, I'll announce the winning prize. By the way, what percent are we at with your computer? We are at 91%. Shirley. You Money. Got, you got 15, 15 minutes. 15 minutes, baby. Yeah. So okay. See what happens. We got a lot of side games going we got, on. We got a lot happening here. All right, we have 12 large pizzas from Domino's still in the treasure chest. One free year VIP subscription to Hoist the Colors. Tailgate party for 10 from Parker's Barbecue. $100 gift card from Familia. A $100 gift card from Chico's. A $100 gift card to Greenville Pool. A $100 gift card to A.J. McMurphy's. $100 gift card to the Team Store from the Down East Wood Ducks. A $100 gift card from the Shine Factory. $250 gift card to Bostick Sug Furniture. Mm, well said. And a one hundred dollar gift card. A one hundred dollar gift card to Ottavola. So, Chris, those are the prizes left. Anything in particular you would like today? Uh, I'm just happy that I was caller twelve. All right, <laughs> so whatever. Good stuff. All, All right. right, not picky. Ready to open it up? All right. Shirley, stick your hand in the jar, and let's get a winning number for Chris Hill out of Greenville, North Carolina. First time winner of the 18th annual Pirate Radio Holiday Treasure Chest. All right. Your number is 26. 26, which means, oh, this is a good one right here, Chris. You are the proud new recipient of a $100 gift card to Atavola Market Cafe. All right. There we go. I really hate that bell. <laughs> I tell you what, it's a lot of fun to ring, Troy. Now I see why you like to do it so much. Yeah, well, I'll bring it it's back. It's the most fun often. I've had in a while. I'll bring it back next week. Chris, congratulations, man. There you go. Uh, Not only did I win, I'm a first-time winner. 
but you brought the bell back for me. <laughs> there you go. go. Fire it. <laughs> Arr, bring Great. it again. <laughs> go ahead, Troy. <laughs> Woo! Arr, lady. That's a good one. Save that one for a promo right there. Okay. <laughs> Got Chris fired up. Chris is fired Feeling up. good now. All right. All right. Chris, uh, Ellerby will get up with you and find out, uh, tell you how you can redeem your prize. That was great, bud. All right. right, Thanks. Chris Hill got me fired up right there. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Chris Hill, our winner today. All right. Man, now I'm feeling, like, good, positive. Yeah. Well, it's fun to give away stuff, isn't it, Cliff? It is. I love giving. I love uh, buying gifts, giving gifts. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Is it better to give than to receive? At this age and stage in my life, yeah. Mm -hmm. With kids and stuff, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I don't even have anything I want for Christmas. That's how I feel. I've kind of, like... I need less stuff. Probably. I've had my time. Yeah. It's time to let others have stuff. My time is over. Yeah. Walmart not making money off Clip Rock this year. Nah, not at all. Yeah. All right. Uh, Troy, what other old relics do you have that you have not thrown away, like from Pirate Radio? Oh, Clip, if it belongs... <laughs> At the station, I have it. <laughs> like, uh, old, it I'm, I've got the old microphones. I've got uh, old signage. Uh, went, I think we even saved the old table. Yeah, it's been the back now. Yeah. The boxes that the old microphones came in. The boxes that the table came the in. The boxes that the boxes came in. <laughs> I, you know, I'm sentimental like that. Yeah. And I, have, I do have a problem parting with things that have meaning. And well, I, like, I mean, I don't mind you being sentimental about keeping the old microphones or the old signage or whatever, but we don't need the we don't need the boxes that they came I, I've in. I've tried to be better about that, but some of the boxes, like I felt like, well, if there was a problem with the microphone, then we have the box that we could return it. But I after don't think about they'll take them after ten, 10 years. years, I guess I could probably just start warranty <laughs> up on those mics. But you know, the minute I throw it out is when I need it, Cliff. This I know. Is always happens. That is true. Same that... thing with an email. It's like if I delete this email, it's going to be the one that I need. And sure enough, there was something that happened three years ago that I needed to go back. Surely yeah, remember yep, this. That's we right. had to go yeah. back and look at the history and because we didn't delete them. I found them. That's why I told I told LRP, I was like, see, this is why I don't delete things. That is a hoarder's way to go through life, but it is legitimate, too. It like, is. That has happened there to is, me. It's it, happened to everyone. I have sure. needed things that are more than three years old, especially on emails, mm-hmm. that I had to refer back to. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel the same way about objects sometimes. Like, I might need this again. So, my question is, if it was an email from three years ago, how long did the search engine take to find that particular email? A lot quicker than Clips does to update. <laughs> <laughs> Still at 91, yeah. folks. I, surprisingly fast, if you put in the right keywords, surely. Yeah. Okay, I was just curious. Yeah, very quickly, actually. You're talking to a I'm man who knows it, how to hunt down an email. Yeah. Well, because, you know, I'm not, you know, in the hierarchy of this building, I don't necessarily think that I get a lot of emails. I mean, I get a lot of junk mail, but not a lot of emails. So I'm thinking to myself... The amount of emails that I have to delete out of my inbox every day that I don't need, yeah, I can't imagine how big yours is. Uh, it, it would shock you. And I try and delete most of those type of emails that I don't need. Uh, but you would be stunned if you knew the amount of emails I had in my inbox. I don't think I would be because I do not do a good job of deleting mine. Yeah. So I don't even know if it has a number. Let me see if I can find This reminds me of a conversation, Troy, though, that we had that you said, would this be a good show topic? Mm -hmm. Where you had me guess the amount of photos you had in your phone. Oh, yeah. Oh! Oh, you got a new here, phone, delete, Yes. Deleted, I've got 24,000 just deleted emails. Oh, I don't know if Jeez. I can see that on the... I don't, uh, I don't even know. But can I, I look at mine? Hold I on. can't see total number, but it is a doozy. Oh, here we go. I got... Oh, deleted items. Mine is 3609. <laughs> wow. See, I've got 4,000 plus in my inbox. Uh, you wanted... Yeah. I have 75. So you were talking... I did get a new phone uh, clip, but what was your question? You asked me one day after the show how many photos do you think i have in my phone yeah (laughs) and i think i lowballed it now you got a new phone does everything just transfer over uh clip in my case i put everything to the cloud oh so i wouldn't lose it yeah and uh, i did transfer over so when i activated the phone it was just like the old phone all the apps all the pictures all the videos boom right here on this phone Hmm. so it's like nothing happened except i have a new brand new nice iphone 12 pro max for those that were wondering the, the body has been upgraded yeah. but the inside the inside's the same okay and i just hit a milestone 
with uh, my photos. What milestone would that be? How many that are on this phone currently? 100,000. Hmm. No way. No. No that's way. way too high. That's even for Troy. Yeah. That's Come on. Don't high. be ridiculous. Are you talking Troy? about <laughs> Troy takes a whole oh, lot of I pictures? Yeah. He p- takes pictures of everything. Surely, don't be ridiculous. I just hit over 50,000. <laughs> I'm half of what you thought I was. 50% less than estimates. Uh, this guy's yeah, yeah. not a lunatic. I've He's only got 50,000. 50,208 pictures on this phone right now. Unbelievable. So now I will tell you what's hard to find because I've got some really good photos on here. It's hard to search photos because in emails you can use keywords. All right. And they, photos don't really work like that. I got You got to know the date. You, you can search know by the date. Time. But yeah. if you... Your mind plays funny tricks on you. Like I had a picture of our our buddy Kevin O'Brien who unfortunately passed away at Channel 9 and I wanted to post that with a memory and I thought it was just a couple months ago and I spent like one night two hours looking for this photo that I had of him at Michelangelo's Pizza where he always used to eat and I thought I honestly thought it was a couple months ago and it ended up being like more like 10 months ago but my mind thought it was like just oh I just saw him you know so you got to really know the time frame but I did end up finding it but it took forever. I'm pretty good on years when it comes to sports, like Redskins, Pirates, what years this happened in. But I think for myself and for a lot of people, 2020 has really screwed up our concept of time. Yeah, like every like this whole year it does like this has been weird. If this year has felt like five years, yeah, in many ways, only 2,500 videos by the way, so much slower on the not uh, bad, not bad video. at all. Uh, this has been a long year, hard to believe. It will be coming to an end. I can't believe it, Troy D. We are and, halfway through December. And we've only been in the COVID era for nine months. Doesn't that seem like... When you say nine months, that's not that long, right? Oh, you can do anything for nine months. Nine months feels like nine years this you year. You carry a child for nine months most, <laughs> Man, it's most easy. times. Yeah. That's so how about if you were pregnant? Like, How about if you got pregnant mid-March and you're delivering your child, like getting ready to... All during COVID, you were pregnant. COVID, baby. What a terrible time to be pregnant. Well, you pre- I mean, you got to be paranoid. I mean, you're already paranoid when you're pregnant about kids. You're paranoid, something. but you probably want to, like, chill, right? Well, I guess, yeah, I guess you stay home. I've never nothing. been pregnant. So Me I, neither. Yeah. Me neither. <laughs> Chandler? Chandler is pregnant. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> Unless you count food babies, then I've had plenty of those. Yeah. But no, nine months. Like, doesn't this past nine months feel like forever? Yes. Yes. When you go back to March. I've said it before. Like, I think Kobe Bryant passed away, like, three years ago. Yeah. That was this year. Yep. That was, yeah. it was like, end of February. Yeah. yeah. It's been Groundhog Day every day for nine months. That is but true. But we're almost there, folks. I see the the vaccine started hitting today. Yeah. Yep. The shot in the arms. They're saying by March, all the first responders and all the old people will be vaccinated. And then by summer... You know, everybody. Every, yeah, everybody's going to be vaccinated. That wants it. I'd have talked to some people that don't, but uh, every, it'll be available to everybody. I don't know if they can force you to take it, but it will be available at least. So th- I think by summer, I can start to see the light at the end of the tunnel here. Life getting back to normal. Whatever, I hope so. Whatever normal is. But I've I, stopped making predictions on when. Yeah, me too. I thought it would be over by now. I know. <laughs> and that was wrong. Hey, for a couple of weeks uh <laughs> But but the the, the vaccine is a game changer. It is. That is an absolute game changer. It, the literal that's shot in the arm is the figurative yes. shot in the arm and we it, need. And that has started. And uh, that and that's just Pfizer's. You've got two other companies rolling out vaccines too. So I think by Moderna that, is one of them. Yeah. yeah. And there's another one that's getting ready to come yeah, on the pipeline. One, so yeah. there's going to be a, a mass vaccination opportunity in 2021 in the first and second quarter. All right, let's uh, let's get our last break in. Troy D. We'll come back. You're ready to wrap up a Monday edition of Pirate Radio Live. Back with you after these words. Hey, Pirate fans, this is Cliff Godwin. Baseball is back at Clark LeClaire Stadium. We will be hosting several youth camps over the next couple months. All camps will be at Clark LeClaire Stadium, and all camps are open to participants between the ages of 7 and 13. Make sure to check out our camp website at cliffgodwinbaseballcamp.com for all camp details and registration information. And, of course, go Pirates! Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer here. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now here. 
Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Heiser Bush Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer. IRC Beer. Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. Do you think you've been exposed to COVID-19? Are you planning to visit parents, family, or friends this holiday season? Do you have travel plans and need to be tested? Arc Point Labs of Greenville offers same-day COVID-19 results. No referral needed. Same-day results available. Arc Point Labs of Greenville is located across from Vited Hospital and Executive Circle behind Southern Bank. Call for an appointment or walk in. Arc Point Labs of Greenville, 215-5688 or arcpointlabs.com. While other folks come and go, Greenville Pool and Supply has been your local pool store in Greenville and Eastern North Carolina for over 40 years. Are you finding yourself spending more time at home than ever before? If so, turn your backyard into a vacation destination. Greenville Pool has pools for any size backyard. Choose from the very popular fiberglass, classic vinyl, or custom concrete. If you order your pool now, it could be in by this spring. If you're ready for a pool, contact the pros at Greenville Pool and Supply. Hi, I'm Annalie Newhoff. And I'm Rob Campbell. And And we we are are with with Copy Pro. Pro. We have been locally owned and operated here in eastern North Carolina for almost 50 years. Copy Pro is the leader in office technology. Does your business struggle with keeping printing costs low or producing professional documents? Here at Copy Pro, total customer satisfaction is our number one priority. We have a variety of solutions to help reduce your printing expenses and make your business more productive. Call us today at 1-800-682-6558 or online at copypro.net. Copy Pro. We are the professional office systems people. If you are push mowing your yard using an inefficient lawn tractor or your current zero turn spends more time in the shop than mowing your grass, it's time you look at a Hustler zero turn lawnmower. Residential mowers from Hustler are built like tanks and drive like sports cars. All Hustler mowers have fabricated welded steel decks. Don't settle on cheap units with flimsy stamped decks from big box stores. Come see Ron Ayers Motorsports. It will guide you to the right mower for your property and your budget. Find us at Ron Ayers Motorsports Highway 11 North of the airport in Greenville. At Parker's Barbecue, our family has been serving your family for three generations. For that, we say thank you. Blessing families every Thursday. Kids eat free all day. That's the Parker's way. Legendary food served from our three locations. Always quick, always delicious. That's the Parker's way. At Parker's, our mission is to impact our customers through Christ-like service in a way that feeds them both physically and spiritually. That is the Parker's way. This is Stephen Igo, publisher of HoistTheColors.net. Recruiting is the lifeblood of any college sports program, and no one devotes more coverage to the future of ECU athletics than Hoist the Colors. Want to know who's going to be the next Holt Nailers or Jaden Gardner? We've got all the inside scoop on the Pirates' most talented recruits and top targets 24-7. Sign up now and get your first month of coverage for a single dollar. HoistTheColors.net, the most reliable reporting on ECU athletics. Pirate Radio. It's great to be on. This is uh, this is an honor. You know, Pirate Radio is kind of a cult following around North Carolina, so I'm excited. The voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Atlantic Wireless, your local authorized U.S. cellular agent. Atlantic Wireless now offers home internet service. Visit it. Wireless.com to find a store near you. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. PRL this afternoon is brought to you by Bud Light. It reminds Pirate fans to always stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates, and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, let's head back in to PRL. Here's your host, Clip Rock. All right. If you want an hour to fly by, just hang out with Troy D on Pirate Radio Live. On Mondays. Goes by fast, I'll tell you that. It does. Yeah. Fun stuff, though. Enjoyed it. Shirley, we are at 97%. Oh, man. 98. Yeah, 98. it's like Come going on. up Come quickly on. now. If Come we on. can uh, hang out here for a couple more minutes, we could do this together. No. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I don't want it to happen that much. <laughs> 98%, Shirley, is where we're going to wrap it up. We almost got there. Uh, started at 2.30 with this update on this computer. And it is six o'clock, and we're at ninety-eight percent. Give her the give her the win. 
<laughs> I'm going to see you Thursday in hour three. What do you think we'll be talking about Thursday, Cliff? I think we'll be talking about an ECU basketball loss, their first of the season. All right. I think there could be a big news story by Thursday. To you. Yeah. And I'll uh, just leave that out there. I think there's. What? That's it? No, a big news about story. Regarding what? Uh, ECU. Okay. A big ECU story. Anything more specific? Uh, future leadership of East Carolina University. All right. That narrows it down. Yeah. Okay. Ma- so we'll could, be. Uh, could be a major story Thursday. Could be talking about that Thursday at 5 yes, o'clock. That's my prediction for Thursday. And surely it says 100%. Oh, it did it. We'll give you the win. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. We'll give you the W. How long does this take today? Three hours? 2.30, so three and a half hours. Yeah, wow. And it's still spinning, so well, it's not updated. done yet. Thank goodness. All right, uh, Troy D., we'll see you Thursday. See you uh, next time. Chandler, Shirley, see you uh, guys tomorrow, 3 o'clock Tuesday at 3 for an all-new edition of Pirate Radio Live. Thanks for listening to Pirate Radio 